It's time for Avon Varsity Football on Audio Sports Online. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by McDonald's, Reynolds Body Shop, McNamara Florist, and Red Cobra Wrestling. Avon Varsity Football is an audiosportsonline.com production. Now let's head out to the field for tonight's game. The sectional pairings for the 2014 IHSAA football tournament will be announced this weekend. But for the Avon Orioles, well, they have something that they are more focused on. They are still in the hunt for the Hoosier Crossroads Conference Championship. Two games remain in this season. And tonight it is senior night here at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium as the Avon Orioles will take on the Zionsville Eagles. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Avon Oriole Football and Audio Sports Online. My name is Brian Scott. I'll be shortly joined by the Indiana Football Hall of Famer Dave Schell. Alborn. Avon coming off of a huge win last week as they knocked off Westfield by the score of 23 to 6. It was cold, it was wet, it was windy, and the Orioles, well, they took advantage of a few Westfield turnovers to run out to a 16 to nothing lead after the end of the first quarter, and they eventually were able to uh, keep that lead throughout the night. Scored a late touchdown in the fourth quarter as Derek Tennant, he scored through all three of the Orioles' touchdowns, two on the ground, one from a uh, uh, touchdown pass from Brandon Peters, and the Orioles came away with the 23-6 win. That kept them tied with the Fishers Tigers atop the HCC standings. When we went into play last week, four teams, well, they all controlled their own destiny. You had Avon, Fishers, Westfield, and Noblesville. Westfield lost to Avon, and Noblesville lost to Hamilton Southeastern. So that means only two teams control their own destinies. Uh, right now, Fishers will play Westfield tonight, and, of course, the Orioles are taking on Zionsville. Brandon Peters last week didn't have to do a whole lot. It wasn't the best conditions to throw the football, but he did finish 12 of 22 for 107 yards, the one touchdown to Derek Tennant, and it was really Derek Tennant on the ground. 34 carries, 177 yards, a pair of touchdowns on the night, but it was the Avon defense that once again stepped up big. They've been doing it all season long, and one of the best things they've been doing, well, they've been taking advantage. They're getting takeaways, and the Oriole offense is coming back and taking advantage of it and converting those into points. I bring in Dave Shelbourne and Coach. It's It's been a two-prong attack, special teams, uh, three-prong, let's say, offense, defense, special teams. It's all been working for the Orioles for the past few weeks. And as I just mentioned, one of the things that has been really, really impressive with Coach Mark Bless teams, the defense has been able to get the turnovers and the offense has been able to turn them into points. Well, I, I think the thing that I'm the most impressed with is they continue to get a little bit better every week. Uh, you know, we're not seeing the mental errors that I think we saw a little bit earlier in the year with some of the penalties and turnovers and, you know, maybe somebody defensively, uh, you know, maybe not quite being in the right place or missing a tackle. And I, I, the thing that I've noticed the most is that, you know, offensively they're mixing it up with the run and pass. Uh, you know, they've got uh, Tennant back right now, and he's doing a nice job running the football, and Darian Love obviously compliments him very well. Brandon Peters is a big-time quarterback, and, He's spreading the ball around a little bit, even though Andrew Griffin is his primary uh, <laughs> receiver. And I think the offensive line has just consistently gotten better as the season's gone on. So we'll, we'll talk about it here just a little bit more after the National Anthem. And we will now have our National Anthem.
A very fine rendition of our national anthem indeed here at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium at Avon High School as it is senior night at Avon and at halftime we'll be talking about those seniors that will be moving on uh, after they graduate this year. Right now let's get back to tonight's game between the Orioles and the Eagles. We talked about the Orioles with a big win last week against Westfield. For Zionsville this is a year in trans uh, transition. Coach Pat Echeverria taking over for longtime head coach Larry McWhorter. These Eagles will look a little bit different than what you might be have, have seen in the past few years and in most teams in transition there they've had a little bit of growing pains this year this year zionsville two and five on the year they picked up their first win in hcc play last week when they knocked off brownsburg by the score of 16 to 3 uh, zionsville has used primarily a kind of a tandem quarterback situation but last week they went solely with drew bertram their junior quarterback 10 of 21 for 100 yards he had one touchdown pass they still rely heavily on the running game uh, senior running back matt panola 103 yards in that contest they also got uh, some nice yards out of kyle sheehan uh, but it, this is still uh, a, an offense that has been very inconsistent as the year has progressed. Right now, when you take a look at Zionsville, uh, they are at near the bottom of the standings as far as points scored. And defensively, well, they're not too bad defensively, but they're going to have a, their hands full tonight when they take on the Avon Orioles. Zionsville, as I mentioned, 2-5 and five on the year, 1-3 and three in HCC play, while the Orioles... After that win last week, they remain number nine in Class 6A, a 5-2 and two record, 3-1 and one overall in HCC play. As we mentioned, Avon and Fisher's both 3-1 and one right now in Hoosier Crossroads Conference action with everybody else looking up at both the Orioles and Tigers. A win tonight and a loss by Fisher's, that means next week uh, it's pretty much Avon would be playing for sole possession of the Hoosier Crossroads Conference crown. But one game at a time as the Orioles will try to get by Zionsville tonight. It is still cold, it is still damp, but it is not quite as rainy as it was last week in Westfield. The wind, not nearly as much a factor as it was last week when it was gusting 20 to 30 miles per hour, but it is still a little bit of a chilly night, but the fans have come out uh, for senior night as we uh, are awaiting the teams. It's a been a, We're a little bit behind schedule again with all the senior night festivities, so as we get ready for tonight's game, some of the keys, Coach, that I think we want to look at as far as uh, Avon goes is, again, just that continued <coughs> consistency that we've seen the last few weeks both offensively and defensively, and just keeping, uh, as you mentioned, uh, really I think if we go back past uh, almost to the Whiteland game, we've really seen the penalties start to come down, and that's something Coach Bless and that coaching staff have really worked on in the past well, few weeks. M- mentally they're, they're, they're just into it. I mean, offensively you don't see them jumping off sides. You don't see the missed assignments. You don't see the drop passes. Uh, you know, they've gotten uh, really, really solid with their running game. Defensively, you know, I think they're – playing with the same emotion they played with earlier but earlier in the year it just seemed like you know we would we would do a really nice job and then give up a big play and we haven't done that uh, as much lately I think they're playing hard I think they're very comfortable with what they're uh, what they're doing defensively they do a nice job swarming and running to the football you know special teams have been <laughs> solid most of the year we've had a couple of big plays with the uh, you know with the block with the block kicks and, you know, some field goals. We've been kicking the ball into the end zone, and, you know, we've just been pretty solid in our coverage. So I think overall, you know, and, and, and I do, I always look at things as a head coach would, but they're, they're, they're just more consistent. And, uh, you know, as, as the season wears on, you want to be playing your best football at the end of the year. And I would say right now that, uh, you know, no doubt in my mind, Avon's playing the best football that they've played all season. Orioles making their way out onto the field. You will have to excuse us if we pause a little bit. They are wearing the camo numbers. They are a little difficult to see here from the press box, but Avon making their way out onto the field. Looking at tonight's contest, the Avon Orioles are averaging a little over 183 yards rushing per game and 187 yards passing per game. So they're doing a good job in both both running the football and throwing the football, and they're averaging a little over 28 points per game. Meanwhile, for Zionsville one of their biggest problems has been consistency on offense all year long they come in averaging about 167 yards on the ground and 145 
five yards through the air and they are averaging just a little over 15 points per game so again not a big scoring offense by these zionsville eagles uh, they've been close they've managed to pick up wins against brownsburg and lebanon uh, but for the most part, it's been a struggle for them to find any type of offensive consistency. They're also giving up about 24 points per game, while Avon's coming in uh, averaging, again, over 28 points per game and giving up fewer than 20 or just a little bit over 24 points. The head coach of the Zionsville Eagles in his first season is Pat Echeverria, 2-5 and five so far this year. He's 25-19 and 19 in his fourth year overall. He comes from Eastern Hancock, and he took them to the semi-states just last year. And the head coach for the Avon Orioles is Mark Bless. He is 37-17 and 17 in his fifth year at the helm of the Orioles, 186-84 and 84 overall as we get ready for some football tonight. Uh, again, a little chilly, but not nearly as, as bad of conditions as we saw last week. There is a bit of a breeze that's moving left to right, as you see uh, uh, on your monitor right now as we get ready for some football. But the, there's a few sprinkles in the air. You might see a few umbrellas up, but not nearly the steady rains that we saw last week at Westfield, and we don't really expect to see them uh, all game tonight. So, Coach, we're about ready for some football and a big, big big game for senior night here at Avon. Oh, always is. I think one of the bigger other changes to mention here is we'll actually be playing on the artificial turf tonight. And last week you played on real grass, and real grass is nice to play on, but not when it's raining. So, you know, one of the advantages of the artificial turf is that it's, you know, consistent. Even when it's raining, you still get good, uh, you know, good footage, and, you know, you can make the cuts and do all the things. So, yes, it is a very important game for Avon. Uh, you know, they're on a nice roll. They want to, you know, be consistent here. We'll find out about the draw on Sunday. But, you know, t tonight it's Zionsville, and it might be a new coach, but it's still Zionsville, and they're a solid football program with lots of tradition. Uh, you know, they're always a, a team that plays as hard as they possibly can from start to finish. And, I know in the years when I was coaching, anytime we beat a Zionsville team, you felt real good about it because, you know, they always came in prepared. You know, and even though they're struggling a little bit, you know, for Zionsville this year, I'm sure Coach will uh, <coughs> will have them ready for, for the game tonight. Zionsville will receive to begin this football game back deep is Holden Hodge and Brendan Mickelsole as Alex Stefan gets ready to boot this one away. He runs up, puts a foot into it. It's a short kick. Hodge will take it at about the 16. He goes up to the 20, tries to cut across the field, and a nice tackle coming in. Bryant Fitzgerald with the tackle. Bryant wearing number seven tonight, not his traditional number. And, again, they're wearing those camouflage numbers. Uh, so a little difficult, but we picked out Bryant pretty easily. Zionsville score, starting quarterback will be a 6'1", 190-pound junior, Drew Bertram. As the Eagles break the huddle and they'll start first and 10 from about their own 23 yard line. And Bertram will start right out of the shotgun. He will bring a man in motion. That is Eddie Mattingly. Back to pass. He'll swing it out to Mattingly, look for some room, and he will be run out of bounds over on the far sideline. Let's give you the Zionsville offensive across the offensive line. Garen Wagner, Teddy Lipinski, Drew Hobick. Chase Fisher and Levi Gelbach. The tight end is Grant Sloan. The wideouts are John Ramsey Jr., Ben Hudson, and Eddie Mattingly, who just caught that pass. The running back is Matt Panola, and Drew Bertram is the quarterback. Second down in about six yards to go with the ball spotted at about the 27-yard line. Well, I'm sure there is some culture shock in Zionsville because they were traditionally a power team. Uh, you know, I formation beat you up and run at you. You know, here we are now in the spread with lots of motion. Uh, one one wide receiver and passes on the first two plays. That one going incomplete because it was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Rashawn Brent got his hand up there to knock that ball away as Bertram looked like he was trying to get it out to Grant Sloan on the near side. It goes incomplete and we'll have third down in about six for the Eagles. Just underway here at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium. Zionsville and Avon, last home game of the regular season for the Orioles. And the defense steps up for a big third down in six. Bertram will work out of the gun. He'll have Matt Panola to his left. 
three wide outs, two to the far side of the field. Back to passes. Bertram down the field. Passes incomplete. Penalty flag comes in. He was looking to get it to Eddie Mattingly, and it looked like uh, maybe Drew Shiotovich or Braden Luce got his feet tangled up, and it's going to be pass interference against the Orioles. Well, you know, I've, since this is the first time I've seen Zionsville other than the film, I mean, they've, they've come out here and thrown the ball on every play. So they either feel comfortable doing that or they just feel that, Avon inside is, uh, you know, a, a little bit tough to run against, and it, it appears that they're going to come out here and uh, air it up here pretty good, try to loosen up Avon's defense uh, in the beginning, and, you know, maybe maybe the plan is to be able to do that so they can run the football, but right now they've thrown a football on every play. Penalty will give the Eagles a first down at their own 42-yard line as they will bring Mattingly in motion, but the give is to Panola. He'll go straight up the middle, and he's going to be met and driven back. Looked like Gunnar Larson got in there to make the tackle, and while we've got a moment, let's give you the Oriole defense. The defensive line is Joe Belden, Gunnar Larson, Trevor Bernhardt, and Rashawn Brett. The linebackers are Matt Thompson, Thomas Williams, Zach Williams back into the starting lineup tonight. Nick Handelin and Gabe Blackston are the corners, and Braden Luce and Drew Shayadovich, they are the safeties. Second down and nine for the Eagles. Ball at the 43-yard line. Mattingly comes in motion as Bertram's back to pass. Goes far to the far side looking over there. I believe he was looking for John Ramsey Jr. It's incomplete. It'll be third and long for Zionsville. Right. You mentioned Gunnar Larson. I mentioned earlier I, I coached Gunnar when he was a seventh grader over at North and had the big games this week. And uh, Avon Middle School South won the – Eighth grade battle on the last play. I'd like to get a mention in for the middle school programs. And Avon Middle School North won a real close game and uh, beat South in the seventh grade game. Everything I hear about the middle school program is that uh, Coach Bless is going to be very fortunate. There's some players coming. Play clock winding down, and that's going to cause head coach Pat Echeverry to call a timeout. 10.31 left to go in this opening quarter. No score. Back in a moment. This is Oriole okay. Football and ASO. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino Nodell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. After the timeout, the Eagles have the ball, third down and nine from their own 43-yard line. They'll bring Sloan in motion back to passes Bertram. Looks, plenty of time, fires over the middle, and it's complete. In pr pursuit is Gabe Laxton's, but Ben Hudson comes down with the reception. He was wi wide open over the middle of the field. Laxton's was able to pursue and bring him down, but it's a big game for the Eagles down to the Oriole 19-yard line. Well, he, he had plenty of time to throw, and the coverage was, was good early. You know, he was searching for a receiver, but because the offensive line did such a nice job, he was able to stand in there and find the open man, and somehow Avon safeties. Must have been in man because uh, there wasn't anybody in the middle of the field and Gabe had to chase it down from behind to, uh, you know, not, not let him have the touchdown. It looked like he had a chance to go all the way. This play won't be, won't get off as a illegal procedure penalty will be called against the Eagles. That'll back him up five to the 24-yard line of Avon. It'll be first and 15 right there. Clock begins to move as we hit the 10-minute mark of the first quarter opening drive of the football game alongside Dave Shelbourne I'm Brian Scott as the Eagles will go to a four wide look Avon four defensive linemen down they'll bring Sloan in motion and now he will reverse Bertram on the draw gives it to Panola Panola right up the middle he'll pick up a couple of yards but that's going to be about all before he's brought down, I believe A.J. Elcock might have been in there to make the tackle, and it'll bring up Thomas or Thomas Williams also in there. It'll be second down about 13. Yeah, as typical with kind of the West Coast offense, the spread offense is here. They're calling all the plays from the sidelines. They're not huddling. You know, they're trying to give the illusion they're in a hurry up, and they are a little bit, but 
you know, they're they're just getting to play from the sidelines. Everybody's looking over there to figure out what play they you know they're going to be running. Six play of the drive as Sloan comes in motion in the near side. Bertram drops back, fires over the middle, pass incomplete. Looking for Matt, or excuse me, uh, Eddie Mattingly over the middle, but the ball was slightly behind him. It'll bring up third and long. Again, Zach Williams, who's been missing in action the past few weeks, he's back in tonight. And uh, nice to see Zach out there as the senior gets to play his final regular season game on his home turf. Third down, about 13. Ball is at the Oriole 22 yard line. It'll be interesting to see what the Eagles do here. They are not known for kicking field goals this season. As Mattingly is in motion, it is going to be an option. Bertram throws in the corner, passes, knocked away on an outstanding play in the corner by Nick Handlin. They were looking to get Ben Hudson over there in the corner, but Handlin got a hand up and knocked the ball away. Yeah, that, that's a play that, you know, you try to run a low the DB, uh, you know, asleep. But Nick was in man, stayed with him all the way. Uh, you know, had his eyes on the receiver when he put his hands up to catch the ball. Uh, Nick put his hand up, knocked it away. Great, great defensive play, great coverage by Nick Handler. This is a 29-yard field goal by Connor Drake. He's only attempted three all year, and he missed that one well short, and that's... You can see one of the well, reasons now, why. Now, now we know why. Why Zionsville has not attempted too many field goals because that was a 29-yarder. In today's day and age, as Coach Shelbourne has mentioned, with kickers routinely kicking 40, 45-yard field goals, that one was about four yards short from 29 yards out. So the drive stalls out, and Avon will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line as Brandon Peters brings the offense out onto the field. They will start immediately in a three-wide look, two wide outs to the near side. Derek Tennant is the tailback. And first and 10, Brandon back to pass throws. Right side pass is complete. And that is, and, or excuse me, Brayden Loose on the far sideline. And Braden will have be very close to a first down. Let's see where they spot the ball. Actually, they're going to spot it at the 29. So it's a pickup of nine yards on the opening play of the series for Luce and the Orioles. Yeah, d different look for Zionsville this year defensively as well. Uh, Coach Echeverry is a 3-4 is a guy. He was a defense coordinator at Pike for quite a while with uh, Coach Moyers, and he's brought that defense with him here to Zionsville. Four wide out look, but this is Derek Tennant. Bounces it outside, now cuts it back up. And he'll pick up about three yards up to about four yards, let's say, up to the 33-yard line. And the Orioles will move the chains first and ten. Derek, Derek was out with an injury, uh, you know, in the middle of the season. In the last couple of games he's been back. He's, he's running harder. I like the way he's moving. He's, you know, he's got that little, you know, as I like to refer with the running backs, he's got those two speeds. He's got that glide speed, and he can hit the hole when he has to, and he also runs with power. First and 10, Avon at their own 33-yard line. Their opening drive of this football game as Peter stays in the gun, gives it to Tennant. Tennant bounces it to the outside, looks for some room, and he's not going to find a whole lot before the Shan or excuse me, the uh, Eagles manage to put, bring him Blake down. Several in there on the tackle. Among those, Blake Coker, the 6'2", 200-pound senior linebacker let's give you the oriole offense across the offensive line nick shoemaker zach ryan brady nyland nazo nalbandian ross carter the tight end is matt moore the wideouts are andrew griffin cole rightly zach batustic when he's in there he will be the fullback Derek Tennant is the tailback and brandon peters is the quarterback it's a three wide out look however on this second down and nine back to passes peters steps up fires near side passes complete Braden Luce, once again, just got right at about the sticks, what's needed to get the first down, and he will be run out of bounds by Holden Hodge, but it will be another Oriole first down. Well, a little, little bit surprised the way Zionsville decided to cover that. You know, we're three wides are off awfully far. Their cushion was about 10 yards. Uh, you know, he made a good choice and made a good catch, but he could have gone a whole lot of different directions. Rightly and Griffin to the near side. Braden to the far side. Tennant is the tailback, and he will get the football. Nothing around the right side. He cuts it left. Brandon Peters leading the way, but Derek Tennant gets some good yardage. Look to go to the right side. There was nothing there. He cut it back left, and he'll take it into Eagle territory at around the 41-yard line. Great, great cutback by Derek. That play was, you know, inside zone. He, he, 
designed to go to the right. Nothing there. He was able to shift it back to the other side. Brandon Peters, not your typical quarterback. Saw an opportunity to get out in front and uh, and lead the play and got, got a nice block for himself downfield. So first and 10, Avon at the Eagle 41-yard line. 7.02 left to go, and now we have a timeout called by the officials. And while we have a timeout, let's give you the Eagle defense. They run a 3-4 across the front lines. Scott Fuller, Grant Grayson, and Monte Chester. The linebackers are Brandon Wilson, Michael Luce, Blake Coker, and Dave Peterson. The corners are Taylor Allen and Holden Hodge. And the safeties, Jake Minuski and Duke Shalasi. As the officials... believe we've got a little bit of equipment issue, but they have that straightened out, and now Brandon Peters will come back to the huddle on this. First and 10 at the Eagle 41-yard line. Scott Fuller, the defensive end for the Eagles, they, he is their leading tackler. They will have to keep tabs on where he lines up. Peters, Here's a give. I believe that's Darian Love. He takes it right up the middle, and he will pick up about uh, three, four yards down to the Eagle 20 or 37-yard line. He'll bring up second and six. Yeah, good, good first-down play. They like that inside zone. The offensive line, you know, is, is able to just kind of come off the ball hard, tee it up, uh, get after the down lineman. Derek and uh, Darren both have the ability to – read the openings, read the little bubbles in the defense and make the, the appropriate cut. So, you know, four yards on first down, good first down play. You're, we're almost in four down territory here anyway. Gabe Laxton's now in as a wide out. He's lined up to the near side of the field on this second down and six. Brandon back to pass, lays it out. There's Derek Tennant who will leak out of the backfield and just take the little swing pass down the field inside the 30 down to about the 27 yard line first and 10 avon yeah i'm I'm a little bit surprised just you know watch watching the pass coverage right now there zionsville is you know playing playing pretty far off and really playing a very soft coverage so i don't know if they're afraid that you know avon's got the speed to run by them or that's just their style or they're willing to give up those underneath passes but you know right now avon's taking advantage of that Peters bends under center as they go eye backs as Tennant will take it down to about the 25-yard line as Zach Batustek now in at fullback. Brandon Peters on the season. He's thrown for over 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns, only four picks. And we can count two of those were actually in the Brownsburg game alone. So Peters in this uh, entire Oriole offense, they've done a very good job of holding on to the football this season. Derek Tennant is going to line up as a wideout all the way over on the far side of the field. Darian Love is in the backfield with Brandon Peters. Second down and eight. Peters rolls right, looks, has plenty of time, now continues to roll, and he's going to take it himself as he will take it down uh, around near the 20-yard line before he is chased out of bounds by Grant Grayson. Had a few options down there. You could tell Brandon was looking further downfield, but he ends up just taking a couple of yards in down to about the 23-yard line. Well, the Avon offensive linemen have to just love blocking for him because very seldom is he sacked. He's just got good feet uh, in, in the pocket. He's got good vision in the pocket. And this year especially, you mentioned only four interceptions. Brandon Peters has made a lot, an awful lot of good decisions on what to do with the football. Here's a give. Nice cut by Derek Tennant, and he's going to be stacked up. He's going to be maybe about a half yard shy of what's going to be needed for the first down. So decision time for Coach Mark Bless, and I wouldn't be surprised if he leaves the offense out here on this fourth and short. And indeed, not even considering it right now, as Zach Batustic is going to head into the huddle, so they will go eye backfield. We've seen the big... 6'5", 195 pound Brandon Peters on the quarterback sneaks. It's fourth down in about a yard. But two stick and tenant lined up in the eye. But it is Peters that keeps it and he's got the first down. He just ran over the left side and easily got the first down. We're going to have to put the headsets on you. You're calling plays here and uh, picking up tendencies. But you are right. When you got a quarterback that big, you know, why not just let him pick it up? That's a very safe call and you know, usually a pretty sure call when you've got less than a yard. 
First and 10, Avon Ball is at the Eagle 16-yard line. 4.22 remains in this opening quarter of a scoreless game. This is the first drive for the Orioles after the Eagles missed on a 29-yard field goal. Out of the pistol. As Peters will give, coming around the near side, Derek Tennant's got a lane, and he is going to be knocked out of bounds at around the five-yard line. That looks like it might be enough for a first down as they got he was able to turn the corner, and that will be first and goal Avon at the Eagle Five. Yeah, do, just a little handoff sweep. Nice, nice blocking by the line, especially Matt Moore, the tight end. Uh, you know, the coverage that I've talked about here a little bit with them playing so far off, one of the disadvantages of playing that far back is, that, you know, it's very difficult to get up there and help contain the run. And once there he got around the corner, it was a soft corner, and he picked up some good yardage. Tenant in the backfield. That's Andrew Griffin on the far side. But it is Tenant goes one way, and he's just going to walk into the end zone from five yards out. As he had an easy little stroll, looked to take it to the right. Nothing there. Cut it left. And he walks in for five yards, and the Orioles are on the scoreboard. They actually defended well. They, they had a guy assigned to him, and uh, Derek, Derek just made a miss, as any great running back should do. But they, they did have a defender at the point of attack. Our athlete just happened to be better than their athlete. Alex Devin on for the point after. And Shoyadovic puts it down. The kick goes up. It goes through. And with four minutes left to go in this first quarter, the Orioles are out in front 7-0. Back with a kickoff in a moment. This is Oriole Football and ASO. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. An 11 play, 80 yard drive in four minutes and 55 seconds. Derek Tennant runs it in from five yards out. And the ninth ranked Orioles are out in front on senior night against Zionsville. Seven nothing with four minutes left to go opening quarter alongside Dave Shelbourne. I'm Brian Scott as Alex Stefan is on to kick this one away. And he will kick it deep and it was going to be taken by Mikasell. Mikasell about the five to the 20. And he will bury his head and take it up to about the 25-yard line, and that's where the Eagle offense will come back out onto the field, now trailing 7 nothing with 3.55 left to go opening quarter. First drive by, uh, by Avon, very methodical, good mix with the run in the pass, ran inside, ran outside, uh, hit a couple different receivers, and just, just made a lot of good, good decisions. So... That's the kind of drive you, you, you want to have, and that's a, you know the, the way you want to open the game. So the Eagle offense back out onto the field as they send a player in motion back to pass as Bertram fires near side. Pass is complete, has been Hudson on the near Bertram side before he is brought down. Nick Handlin and 15. Brian Fitzgerald there to bring him down quickly. It's a pickup of about six to the 31-yard line. Yeah, but played very well. You know, I mean, we're, we're playing good coverage. You'll, you'll give up the little hitch. If you do exactly what Nick Handlin did that time, you just come up, be a sure tackler in the open field, and, you know, giving up five yards isn't going to kill you. Four wide look as Bertram will give it to Panola. Panola looks for some room around the outside. And he will find maybe a yard or two at best. Nick Handlin once again there. Also Rashawn Brent to run Panola out. It's a pickup of a couple. It'll bring up third and two for Zionsville. Yeah, but, but Panola is a good back, good hard runner. I don't know, you know, just watching him run here a couple of plays that, you know, and I don't want to put the kiss of death on us, but that he's the kind of guy that can, you know, hit a home run on you, but he's a good solid back. I'm sure he's a good pass blocker too to fit in with their offense. Third and two as they bring a man in motion. Bertram back to pass, steps, pump fakes. Now he tries to shovel pass and it's incomplete. Was looking for the tight end, Grant Sloan. Couldn't find anybody downfield. as good coverage by the Orioles. And then finally the pocket collapsed, tried to make something happen, but 
couldn't hook up with Sloan, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they 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 tried to they tried to fool him. They ran a little hitch pass out here. Nick Hanley came up and made the tackle very quickly. So that time they came out and ran a hitch and go. Uh, Nick wasn't fooled at all when he turned up field. They had him covered all the way. So, you know, the 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 plan to hit the cheap home run didn't work, and he ended up having to. You know, try to scramble with that little shovel pass that went incomplete. Interesting call here on fourth and two. The Eagles show going for it. Here's Panola, and he is going to fight, and he might be shy. A gutsy call by Pat Echeverria deep in their own territory. They go for it on fourth down. And this is all going to depend on the spot. I thought for a moment oh, I, there. Yeah, I don't think yeah, it's close. It's, it's not even close, so. Uh, a curious call by head coach Pat Echeverria. I thought for a minute there they might drop Bertram back for a little quick kick, but they go for it. They'll come up short, and here are the Orioles now, first and 10 at the Eagle 34-yard line. Well, you know, this is one of those, I guess, when you're 2-5, and five, you figure you have nothing to lose and you're willing to take some chances. But, you know, to, to do this this early in the game on the 30-yard line, and, of course, when it doesn't work, it's easy to say, Maybe they should have punted the football, but that's kind of the conventional thing to do. This will uh, this play is blown dead before it can get underway as penalty flags fly. And the men in the striped shirts will talk this over. And they'll call encroachment against Zionsville. So give Avon a free five yards. So if that wasn't bad enough, and now Avon will start first and five from the Eagle 29-yard line. Well, it's tough when you come in, you know, as the underdog anyway, and then, to, you know, give, give them this kind of field position. You know, there, there's a good possibility here. They'll be down 14 to nothing, at the, you know, before the first quarter ends. 309 remains in this first quarter, 7 nothing. Peters play action, rolls to his right, is getting pressure. And he's just going to heave this one up. It's caught, but well out of bounds. Well, it was, yeah, well, well defended, but that, that shows you the kind of arm Brandon has. He was running basically toward the sidelines and, you know, put, put that ball in the air almost, you know, 45, 50 yards, and it was caught. It was a nice catch. It just, you know, was caught out of bounds. It'll bring up second down and five as they had once again Scott Fuller pursuing Brandon Peters and on this second and five they'll line up three wides, two to the top of the formation, one down to the near side. Darian Love I believe is the tailback. Peters will hand it off to Darian. Darian cuts it out, comes to the near side, a little stutter step and he's going to be brought down at about the 25 yard line. Actually, it was Derek Tennant that was the ball carrier. It's a pickup of a couple down to the 26. It'll bring up third and two. Well, both both Avon running backs have that uh, unique ability to read the block at the point of attack and, you know, and either hunk it up in there, you know, behind it or make the little uh, cut to the right or the left and pick up yardage. They both run that play extremely well. The give is to Tennant. He will cut it up. He'll have the first down as he Tenet made a nice there. explosive move through the hole on the cut. And he'll take it down to about the 21-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Avon. It's a great, great play for Avon. They hang their hat on it. The offensive line, I'm sure, love that play because they they just, you know, dig in, their, dig in their cleats and come off the ball. And both backs really hit it up in there very well. Cole Riley will go out to the far side as now Tennant and Love will split Brandon Peters working out of the gun. Now they'll send actually Tennant in motion. Peters back, but he hit a screen to Love. Love to the 20, to the 15, down inside the 10 and all the way down to around the six-yard line on a nicely set up screen. They brought Derek Tennant on motion to the near side, but through the other way on the screen, and they get a big gain. Mix, mixing it up here really well. They're, you know, like I said, they're 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 playing back, which uh, which is a change, and they're giving up some things underneath. Screen is a good call when you know when the front's coming as hard as they can, and as well as you know Avon has been doing all the other things. They've thrown the ball outside, run the football. Screen is a good call. So first and goal from the Eagle six yard line as Brandon Peters will be under center. Here's the give coming near side is Derek Tennant, and he is brought down on a fine open field tackle coming in to make the tackle for the Eagles. 
is Duke Salashi. Salashi, excuse me, a 6 170 pound senior safety. He came through and made the tackle for a loss of a couple. So that'll bring up second and goal. Ball's now back at the or, uh, Eagle eight yard line. As Griffin and rightly to the far side with Andrew working out of the slot. Braden loses to the near side. Back to passes. Peters steps up, eludes the pressure, tries to get a few yards. He'll take it down to about the six. As he eluded the pressure, stepped up, but the defense collapsed, and it'll only be a gain of a couple for Brandon Peters. Uh, outstanding coverage. They had man-to-man coverage trying to hit a slant. They ran a double slant out there to the to, to the slot side. It just And we have a penalty flag. We have a sideline warning for against Avon as they ask them to step back. So only a warning this time. Next time it'll be yards marked. And it'll be third and goal from the six. Clock shows 37.1 seconds remaining as the Orioles will have to run one more play before this quarter ends. As Peters brings the play in from the sideline. 7-0 Avon. Third and goal from the Eagles six-yard line. And... We are going to have a timeout called as Brandon Peters either didn't like the personnel or what they were what was called, and we'll call a timeout with 16.3 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 7-0 Avon back in a moment. This is Oral Football and ASO. McNamara Florist is Indy's hometown florist since 1954 with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Florist is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Florist for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Florist is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Orioles call the timeout on this third and goal from the six. 16.3 seconds remaining. Brandon Peters, once he brought his team to the line, either didn't like the personnel or what he saw defensively, he calls the timeout. So the Orioles will have it again. Third and goal from the six with 16 seconds. Split backs, Love and Tennant. And now they'll bring Derek in motion to the near side. Peters back to pass, fires, looking over in the corner, and he had racing over to the corner, I believe, Andrew Griffin, but that pass is over Griffin's head. Griffin had a step on the defender, Jake Minuski, but it will fall incomplete and will bring up fourth down, and Alex Steffen is on to try for a field goal. Yeah, good call. That's that's called a smash route. You hit your... The outside guy and run your inside receiver on a little quick corner route. It's a tough route to defend in man coverage, especially on the goal line. Uh, just overthrown, just just a touch. Sam Perino on for the 23-yard field goal. The kick is up and the kick is good. 8.3 seconds remain in this first quarter. Orioles take advantage of. Uh, well, we'll call it maybe a questionable call as head coach Pat Echeverria elects to go for it. Fourth and two, deep in his own territory. They don't, the Oriole defense holds, and they turn it into three points. I'm sure Coach Bless would have loved to have had the touchdown, but they had three more. And as we wind down this first quarter of play, Avon will have a 10-0 lead against Zionsville. Well, our, uh, our kicking game has been good. I know they feel very comfortable when they get down inside the 30-yard line. Uh, you know, three is the minimum we're going to get. We haven't missed many field goals, and both our kickers really have done a nice job kicking the football this year. Alex Steffen will kick it off. Brandon Mickelson and Holden Hodge back deep for the Eagles as Alex runs up and puts a right foot into it, and it's an onside kick. The ball is loose, and it will go out of bounds as Coach Bless. It's the Colts' influence. (laughs) Coach Bless goes for the onside kick as he smells maybe a little blood in the water as they try to get the onside kick, but it'll go out of bounds, and the Eagles will have the football. 
7.9 seconds remain in this opening quarter and the ball will be spotted at the 45 yard line of Zionsville. They trail 10 nothing alongside Dave Shelbourne. I'm Brian Scott. Senior night here at Avon High School. As the Eagles back out onto the field, here is Mattingly. He tries to cut it in, eludes one tackler, keeps his legs churning. He'll take it up to about the 49-yard line, and that'll be the end of the first quarter of play. One quarter in the books. The Avon Orioles lead the Zionsville Eagles by the score of 10 to nothing. Back with second quarter action in a moment. This is Oriole football on ASO. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. Second quarter about ready to get underway here at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium. Avon High School, Avon with a 10-0 lead over Zionsville as the Eagles will have the ball second down and six from their own 49-yard line as we switch ends. Mattingly in motion, Bertram back. Play action pass, looks, fires over the middle, pass is complete. And it is complete to Mattingly. Gabe Laxton's made the tackle, but Mattingly managed to run down the 45. That's where the sticks were, and he picks up the first down. Yeah, a little, little, little undercut, man coverage. Tough to chase that guy all, all the way across the field, especially when uh, the protection for the Zionsville quarterback was pretty good. Uh, nice tackle on the open field, though, by Gabe Lax Laxton. So first and 10 for the Eagles. Ball is at the Oriole 45-yard line as Drew Bertram will watch Matt Panola go in motion. They'll swing it out to the far side. It's a lateral, and the Orioles will just pursue. But a great job by Matt Panola, a 6'1", 220-pound senior. Looked like he was going to be dropped for maybe a two-yard loss, kept the legs moving, and he will actually pick up a yard as he'll take it down to the 44-yard line, but it will be second and nine. Just underway, second quarter, ninth-ranked Orioles leading the Eagles 10-0. We'll keep an eye out in Fishers, Westfield playing Fishers tonight, and Fishers already with a 21 to nothing lead. Second down and nine, as they will bring a man in motion, and now penalty flags fly as this play goes nowhere, and an illegal procedure call is forthcoming against Zionsville. A little bit of communication problems. They're shifting, you know, sending somebody in motion all the time. We're up here in the box, so you don't know, you know, what they can hear or not hear down on the field. But they've, they've had a couple uh, miscommunications down there on offense. So move them back to the 49-yard line of Avon, where it'll be second and 14. Mattingly once again in motion, but the give is a play-action pass. They swing it out to Mattingly, wide open. But he couldn't bring it down on a nice fake to Panola into the heart of the line. They pull it, Bertram pulls it back, swings it out to Mattingly, but he couldn't bring it in. It'll bring up third down and 14. Yeah, well, well designed play because he was wide open in the flat. Sometimes defensively you have to kind of count on good luck, and that time Avon got it with the drop pass. So third down and 14, four wide outs for Zionsville as Bertram, and this one again will be blown dead. As call made by the side judge, dead ball foul, another illegal procedure, a motion penalty ball it looks like against Zionsville. Zionsville. So Zionsville now, a couple of the illegal procedure penalties puts them back in their own territory. Back to the 46-yard line, it'll bring up third down and 19. Yeah, they, they, at this point, they might just want to simplify a little bit, just line up and run some of the plays that you like, that you're comfortable with, and hang your head on, because right now, offensively, they're hurting themselves. 
Mattingly in motion as he'll come to the backfield. And here's the option. It's pitched out. Mattingly ball is loose. Still loose. It's picked up. Brian Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald will run it in for the touchdown. They tried to pitch it out on the option. Bertram tried to send it out to Mattingly, but they couldn't hook up. Bertram picks it up, and he runs it in from about 40 yards out, and the Orioles get the turnover and the points all in the same play. They now lead 16 to nothing. Very optimistic play there by Avon, but, you know, it was helped by Zionsville. They had two penalties in a row. You know, they're, they're not being comfortable with what they're doing offensively. They c- and we have a penalty. Let's see what this is all that They may, may say this was forward. They are bringing this ball back, and it's the defense that's going back. So the officials may be calling that this wasn't a lateral, that this was a pass. Fitzgerald. Yep, they did call it an incomplete pass. So it's an incomplete pass. It is not a fumble recovery, and unfortunately this is not college or NFL. Will we get a look at this? What, we might. What, what did I say last <laughs> week or the week before? They'd have to be going under the hood to make that correction. Yep, and this one is uh, take the six points off. Though. I'm, I'm sure they'll be looking at that one after the game because that, that was a big play. Instead, coming out to punt is Max War back deep. Andrew Griffin and Braden loose. And another penalty flag. But this one all the way back at around the 35. And and Avon has called a timeout. Well, we're going to take a timeout as well as we sort through this. 10-15 left to go first half. Avon leads. 10 nothing. back in a moment. This is Oriole Football and ASL. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition, and now Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of it. Opening last November, Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at RedCobraWrestlingAcademy.com. Yvonne takes a timeout after a rather confusing past few minutes, but Max War is on to punt. He loses a handle of it. He will get it off, and it is a poor punt as... It will finally be down, and the Eagles think it hit an Oriole. But they're going to give the ball to Avon at around the 46. So some rather interesting calls here the past minute or two. Again, Brian Fitzgerald thought he had a touchdown on what was looked to be a fumble recovery. The officials ruled it was a forward pass and incomplete. And now on the uh, punt, a poor punt is going to give the Orioles excellent field position at the Eagle 46-yard line. Well, he dropped the snap, was uh, smart enough and athletic enough to scramble around to where he could punt the ball. He just mishit it. So they'll spot the ball at the 46-yard line. First and 10, 10-0 in favor of the Orioles. Peters back to pass, steps up, comes near side, penalty flag as Peters got the ball off. It's complete to Cole Rightly on the near side, but this is likely going to be holding against the Avon Orioles. Brandon makes so many athletic moves and is able to elude so many defenders that sometimes these calls are almost inevitable as the offensive linemen end up trying to to sustain a block just a tad longer than uh, probably they want to. You'd think those camouflage jerseys would make it a little bit easier for them to get those hands in there well these officials are evidently not missing too much tonight because this holding penalty is going to go all the way back to about the 40 yard line of Avon so it's going to be first down and about 24 yards to go for the Orioles clock shows 958 left to go in this first half Peters near side he has rightly again 
Cole with the ball, wraps it up nicely, and he'll take it back into Eagle territory just beyond the 50-yard line to the 49. Nice pickup on that play. It'll make it second down in about 13. Well, you know, Avon has uh, discovered very wisely that their corners are playing off so far. You're going to have a tough time running by them, but they're, they're giving up just about anything you want underneath. So, you know, if we can be patient, it's tough with first and 24, but we picked up a lot of it there. And, you know, if you have to go underneath to pick it up, that's what you do. They've lined up Braden Lewis and Andrew Griffin to the same side of the field. One of the few times we've seen that. They'll throw that way. Nice pass. Braden Lewis comes down with it. A pickup of about 18 yards all the way down to the Eagle. 33-yard line and a first down for Avon. Nice protection again. Uh, great, great throw, especially running to his left. Braden, Braden was wide open. They just cleared out with the outside receiver and brought him on a little deeper uh, down and out, he was wide open. Nice throw and catch. First and 10, Avon ball at the Eagle 33 yard line. 914 left to go first half. Avon with a 10 nothing lead. Three wide outs in the pattern, two to the near side as Brandon Peters will stay in the gun looking over that three down front of Zionsville. Here's the give to Derek Tennant. Tennant, a little shake and juke, and he will maybe pick up a yard down uh, to about the 32 yard line. Make it second and nine. Yeah, it's a n- nice, nice little complimentary play to their, you know, normal inside zone. On that play, the offensive linemen just come off the ball as hard as they can. The back looks for openings. That's a little counter type play off the same action where they actually pull a guard, try to trap, try to kick out the defensive end. That time Zionsville just played it pretty well. So second down and eight as Peters will swing it out. This is Andrew Griffin. Eludes one man down to the 30. And he will keep his feet in bounds enough to take it down to inside the 25, near close to where the first down marker is. And it'll be about a yard shy. It'll bring up third and one. Very simple play. You know, our athlete that time, Andrew Griffin, made their defender who was covering it just the way he was supposed to, made a miss in the open field. And a play that, you know, could have been a minus two ends up being a plus 10 or 12 just because... Andrew Griffin made a great move in the open field. High backfield, Batustic and Tennant. The give is to Derek. He finds some room around the left side. Now he retreats, and that retreat is going to cost Derek. He could have maybe cut it upfield, picked up the yard instead, looked for some more room around the corner, and he's going to be stuffed for maybe a yard loss. It'll bring up fourth and two. Yeah, I th- you know, tried, tried to make something else happen, needed to be aware of what his situation was. He needed to, I think he could have gotten to, you know, had, had he known it, he tried to make a little bit bigger play out of it than he was able to, to make. So they'll leave the offense on the field for this fourth and two with the Orioles already leading 10 to nothing, 7.51 clock moving, left to go in the first half. Brandon back to pass. Fires, looks over to the near side and it's way overthrown. He was looking for I believe Andrew Griffin here on the near side and simply overthrew Andrew, and the Orioles will turn it over on downs. Yeah, try, tried to cross him up a little bit. Worked sometimes, could have been a big play, and, and, you know, instead of pounding it in there for two yards or trying to, you know, hit a little slant or a little hitch route, they thought they might be able to catch him in tight coverage and go for a little bit more of the home run. Unfortunately, Zions will cover it pretty well. So Zionsville will start this drive for their own 26-yard line. They trail... 10 nothing. They're the best offensive drive for the Eagles so far tonight was their first. It ended up in a missed field goal, and since then, the Oriole defense has been rather stout. Bertram back out on the field. Here's a gift to Panola, and he will find nowhere to run as he's going to be dropped for a couple of yard loss. Avon defensive front, you know, getting getting good penetration right now. Uh, you know, appear to be a little bit too active for the Zionsville front. You know, Zionsville has some some nice receivers out there, but at least so far here in the first half, we haven't seen anybody out there that scares you to death that they can take it all the way. Three wides, Ramsey, Hudson, and Mattingly to the near side to give the swing it out to Hudson. Hudson finds nowhere, ball's loose, and an Oriole fell on it. Let's see what the call is. Fitzgerald again on a nice open field tackle. Fitzgerald with the tackle. The Orioles fall on it, and this time the offense will come out onto the field after the turnover. 
and the Orioles will have it first and 10 at the Eagle 22 yard line. Yeah, the design of the play was fine. That's a little rocket screen or outside end screen. The outside receiver ran downfield, came back, had two kick out blocks by the other uh, slot receivers that are out there with them. And, you know, the design of the play was fine, but Fitzgerald just came up, made a great open field tackle. And not only did he do that, he caused the fumble. So first and 10 for the Orioles at the Eagle 22 yard line. The give is to Darian Love, and Darian Love is going to be dropped for a loss on a fine play. Shooting across to make the tackle was Michael Luce, a six foot, 210 pound senior middle linebacker. It's going to be a loss of about two back to the 24 yard line. So second and 12 for Avon. Clock moving, 6.45 left to go first half. Avon with a 10 nothing lead. Alongside Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. As the Orioles have rightly and Griffin to the near side, Love is the tailback. Brandon back to pass, steps up in the pocket, nowhere to go, throws it to the near side, complete to Cole Rightly. I don't think he's going to get many yards out of that, but it is better than a sack that would have been a sack of about 10. Rightly was able to bring it down. It's going to be a little to no gain on the play, but it will be third down. Still, still a big time play. I don't know how I saw him. I guess being 6'5", he could see over the mouse because that time they they blitzed the linebacker and put some pressure on him early even though they didn't sack him. Brandon found a way to get rid of the ball. So it'll be third down and 11 for Avon as Peters out of the gun, drops back to pass, fires down over the middle, pass complete. And diving forward is Braden Loose. They're going to st- stack him up just shy of the goal line. Loose had a step on the defender, tried to lunge at the fi- at the goal line to put the football across, but they'll say he's short. But the Orioles will have it first and goal inside the one, up 10 nothing. Just a seam route, just ran you know right up the middle of the field, found the opening in between the. Uh, the defensive backs and the linebackers perfectly throwing balls, setting up Avon here to score. High backfield as Peters bends under center. The give is to Tennant. Tennant cuts it up, and they're going to say he's shy of the goal line. No gain as the interior of that Eagle defense was able to keep Derek out of the end zone. It'll remain second and goal from inside the one. Clock continues to move as we approach the 540 mark, and now we have an injury timeout as an Eagle down in the end zone. Well, we want to remind you, stay tuned here at the halftime. It'll be an extended halftime at Avon as we will go over some of the seniors that are making their final appearance here in the regular season at Avon. Tell you who they are as we have a bit of an extended halftime, so we'll we'll take some time to talk to them. We're going to take a timeout while they tend to the injured player. 541, 10 nothing left, 10 nothing. Avon, this is Oriole Football and ASO. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. McNamara Florist is Indy's hometown floor since 1954, with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Florist is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Florist for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Florist is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Player for Zionsville being helped over to the far side did not get a number. I believe it might be Grant Grayson. Uh, as the Orioles on this second and goal from the first. 
from the one. Here's a give. Tennant into the end zone, and he runs it in from one yard out. Derek Tennant runs it in from a yard out, and the Orioles extend their lead, and now penalty flag flies after the play is over. So a penalty flag after the play was over and Tennant was in the end zone. But Derek Tennant's one-yard touchdown run will make it a 16 to nothing Avon lead with 524 left to go in the first half. As the officials will sort out. And now one of the officials comes to the sideline to talk to Coach Bless. Meanwhile, I believe Sam Perino is on to attempt Actually, I think that's Alex Steffen. He was on to attempt the point after. Unsportsmanlike conduct is called against Zionsville. That will likely be assessed on the kickoff. As Steffen is on for the point after. 524 left to go first half. Avon with a 16 to nothing lead. Derek Tennant has just run it in from one yard out after the Orioles were able to get a turnover as the kick is up, the kick is through, and they now lead 17-0. So the Orioles, once again, they take advantage of turnovers. They turn them into points. This time, Derek Tennant runs it in from one yard out, and with 524 left to go in this first half, Avon with a 17-0 lead. Just, you know, very, very business-like tonight, very workmanlike, uh, not a lot of excitement really. Uh, you know, you don't feel a ton of emotion on the sidelines tonight, but Avon is just kind of going about their business. They're doing what they need to do defensively. Their defense uh, has been solid. The offense has been very well balanced. They've moved uh, things around. The kicking game has been solid. Just, uh, you know, one of, one of those methodical halves for Avon and they're up 17 to nothing because they haven't made any errors, and Zionsville's made, you know, quite a few. So back deep, Brendan, Brendan Mickelson and Holden Hodge for the Eagles. As Alex Steffen will kick this one away, and Avon ranked ninth in 6A this week. Already up 17-0 as this one will be taken at the 9. Coming to the 5, trying to get some room is... I believe that is Hodge, and he will find very, very little room at all. Or actually, with that, actually the it was John Ramsey Jr. who actually ran that one back, and he didn't get very far. Evidently, the unsportsmanlike conduct were offsetting. We didn't see anything marched off, so it. We saw the signal against Zionsville. There was evidently one against Avon as well. So, which it explains why they walked over to talk to Coach Plus. So this ball will start at the 13-yard line of Zionsville. They trail by 17 with 518 left to go in this first half. Drew Bertram back out onto the field for the Eagles. They have not had a lot to be excited about. Actually, this is Trevor Lighty. He falls deep, and Trevor Lighty's first pass of the game is picked off by Nick Hamblin. Well, it was Trevor Lighty, a 6'2", 170-pound junior, coming in for Drew Bertram. Actually, I think that was Braden Luce. At 19 because he's still in the game. Well, Braden loose. It's hard to see with these. Uh, it's, it's very. The only reason I realize that is because he stayed in on offense. <laughs> on offense. Well, so credit where credit is due. Braden loose picks off Trevor Lightly, who came in in relief of Drew Bertram, and his first pass is picked off by Braden loose. And the Orioles get another turnover, and they'll have it first and 10 at the Eagle 47 yard line. Up 17 to nothing with still five minutes and 12 seconds left to go in the half. Here's a give to Tennant. Derek right up the middle to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. And he will finally be run out of bounds. As coming in to push him out of bounds on the far side, I believe was Holden Hodge. Otherwise, Derek was looking for the end zone. 
And it's all the way down to the Zionsville five, maybe get the six yard line first and goal Avon. Yeah, it, it appeared to be a little little inside trap play. The right guard pulled and you know, got a great block. Derrick hit the line of scrimmage going full speed. Once he got into the secondary, you know, it, it took a good angle to keep him from scoring a touchdown. Rightly and Griffin to the near side with Andrew working the slot. Loses to the far side, but this is Derek Tennant. Tries to cut it back inside. He'll take it down there. inside the five, close to the four-yard line to pick up a two. It'll be second and goal from the four. Clock moving for 50. Left to go first half as Michael Luce makes the tackle for the Eagles who have seen a, a turnover on the last drive end up in seven points for Avon and now an interception has and a nice Derek Tennant run has Avon knocking at the door once again. Andrew Griffin is lined up to the near side of the field and they will swing it out and a penalty is Griffin was the intended receiver. Hodge tried to come over and knock the ball away, but he went through Andrew Griffin, an easy call for the officials on the pass interference. I think I saw five flags on that, on that play. <laughs> I did see at least three, so, you know, no no doubt about it. Every, every official out there agreed with the call, and, uh, you know, there were, there were flags everywhere. Well, they're not going to call interference. They're actually going to call holding. Um it is an automatic first down, however, for Avon, so it'll be first and goal from about the two-yard line. Hodge looked like he was trying to play through Andrew to knock the ball away, but the officials say he must have gotten a hold of Andrew and pulled him down, therefore the holding call. But it is first and goal, Avon at the two. Offset eye to the left to give us to Tennant. Tennant dodges, but he will be dropped and pick up maybe a yard at best it'll be second and goal from about the one second down so second and goal from the one clock under four minutes left to play Sidelines still show third down, but the holding call would have been an automatic first. Peters back to pass. Fires left side wide open. Gabe Laxton. I think that was Derek. No, that was Derek through. Tennant. It was they, Derek. They, I mean, they, they don't have anybody picking up the back out of the backfield. That's, that's a pass right now. They could complete every, every time. Good call upstairs oh, by Coach Moore. Uh, you know, I don't know if they saved that one for the goal line or not, but they didn't have anybody assigned to him. He, he was standing in the end zone all by himself. Perfect throw, nice protection. Alex Stefan on for the point after. Kick is up. Kick goes through, and the Orioles once again turn a turnover into points. And with 3.41 left to go first half, Avon leads 24 to nothing. Back with a kickoff in a moment. This is Oriole Football on ASO. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition, and now Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of it. Opening last November, Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at RedCobraWrestlingAcademy.com. Derek Tennant takes the Brandon Peters pass from about one yard out, puts it in the end zone, and the Orioles are up 24 to nothing with 341 left. Kickoff will be fielded by Hodge at about his one yard line. He's up to the 10. And he is met, and finally Gabe Laxton's will spin him down along with Brian Fitzgerald, but they'll say Hodge took it up past the 20 to about the 21-yard line, and that is where the Eagles will start this drive. They've had two turnovers on successive drives that have led to points by the Orioles as they lead 24 to nothing. Trevor Lighty came out to start this last drive and his first play was a pass that was picked off by Braden Luce. Well, you'd like to think, think this is enough, but I think this is the same score we saw last night, wasn't it? It does have a bit of a similar ring to it, but I think uh, 
hopefully we will see a little a little different outcome here as the Eagles will start this drive first and 10 this is Panola as Lighty remains in at quarterback so Trevor Lighty remains this is a Lighty and Bertram have been kind of a dual quarterback tandem for Coach Echeverria most of the season. It was Bertram that got uh, pretty much all the snaps last week against Brownsburg in the win, but after watching the offense kind of sputter here against Avon, Coach Echeverria elects to bring in Lighty and is now second down and eight. Well, they're, they're looking for a spark. You know, they've struggled all night offensively, but you know, I, I really think it's as much because the Avon defense is – you know, been, been doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Not only have they contained things and not given up any big plays, but they've forced a lot of turnovers tonight. Uh, Avon's playing with uh, a lot of confidence right now. They're lining up right. They're running to the football. They're, you know, defending in the secondary, and then in the front has just really dominated uh, Zionsville's offensive line. That was Kyle Sheehan with the run. Here's third and long. Lighty eludes a tackle. He flushes out to the right, and the pass is going to have pass interference. He was looking over here to the near side. I think Jared Overmeyer was the intended receiver. And the flag is going to go against Avon. So the 15 yards will be marked off as the Eagles will get the first down as they will finally stop at the Eagle 37 yard line. So first and 10, Zionsville, they trail 24 to nothing with 221 left to go first half. Zionsville with two timeouts still remaining. Avon down to one timeout. They'll bring Ramsey in motion, Lighty to the near side, pass is complete. And coming in to make the tackle Zach Williams. Well, was Zach Williams as Chandler Orball, 5'10", 175-pound senior, made the catch, made a nice spin, turned it upfield, takes it to the 49 before Zach is able to bring him down, but it'll be first and 10 Eagles. You know, there's, there's still a long way away, so as long as, you know, we don't give up a big play here, we should be fine. He'll bring Ramsey in motion, play action, pass, Lighty back, and he goes down. Rashawn Brent with just a bull rush came around the end, and Lighty had nowhere to go before the 6'1", 235-pound senior defensive end for the Orioles brought him down for a loss back to about the 43-yard line. Yeah, you're right. A little, little play action fake that he just basically ignored, ran right over the offensive tackle and got the sack. Three wideouts to the far side as the Orioles look a little. Now they shift their defense. They'll show a four down front play action. They'll swing it out to the far side and still running, eludes, eluding one man over on that far side. Chandler Orball with the catch. Drew Shayadovich had a shot to bring him down for no gain, but Orball with a nice move. <laughs> Took it up field, and it'll take it down to about the Oriole 46-yard line, but it'll bring up third and five. Well, they're uh, not in any hurry here for a team that's down 24 to nothing, and with the clock running, you know, down to about 40 seconds right now. Third and five. Lighty back. Here comes the pressure. Throws it and just throws it down into the ground. There were three black shirts converging on Trevor Lighty, and he had no choice but to try to get rid of that ball in a hurry. He looked over on that far side. I think he was looking again, looking for Orball once again, but threw it about three yards in front of him to bring up fourth down. The, the, the only thing keeping him from multiple sacks here tonight is the fact that he's in shotgun. If he was under center and had to, you know, had to re retreat and get back there, he'd have been flat on his back multiple times tonight. But the fact that he's in shotgun has given him a chance to throw the football away because the pressure that Avon has put on him right now has been uh, very good. Play clock down to two as they do snap it. Lighty back to pass. Pressure comes and he goes down on fourth and five. Coming in to make the tackle, I think that's Nick Handlin. As 
There was just no resistance to the Oriole rush on third and five, and Lighty had very little time and no way to, where to go. And the Orioles sack him all the way back to the Eagle 45-yard line. Avon has it first and 10 with 38 seconds remaining in the half. Well, let's see if it's trick play time here for Avon or if they'll just be content with the 24-yard, 24-point lead or see if they just take a chance and throw one up. Peters works out of the gun. They will drop back. Eludes one man, now rolls to the near side. Looks downfield, and he's just going to throw this one away as the clock winds, and it will stop with 29 seconds. They were looking, and now they're going to call intentional grounding. This is an, this is an official that really just doesn't understand. Intentional grounding has been called as... Brandon well outside the tackle box. There was, I believe, an Oriole well down the field, but he threw it out of bounds. And they're going to call grounding. It's a loss of down. They'll spot the ball back at the uh, Avon 47-yard line. And it'll be second down in about 17. So after the grounding penalty, it's a loss of down. And 29 seconds, and now Avon just simply will go to an eye back. As Zinesville shows blitz on the delay, here's Derek Tennant, finds some room into Eagle territory at the 45 and run out of bounds at around the 43-yard line. That'll get about uh, 10 yards on the run, and they'll spot the ball at the 42-yard line. It'll be second down, about seven, 23 seconds, a little over more than 23 seconds remain in this first half, Avon with a 24 to nothing lead. Third down and seven. Loose and Griffin to the far side. Gabe Laxon's in as a wide out to the near side. Peters works out of the gun, back to pass. Fires left side, looking and it's overthrown. Was looking for Andrew Griffin, it's incomplete. That'll bring up fourth and seven with still 18 seconds on the clock. Yeah, same same play they ran earlier to, to Braden Lewis for good success. That time Zionsville just uh, you know had it covered uh, much better. So that'll bring up fourth down and the Orioles will go ahead and punt this ball away. As dropping back I believe will be Holden Hodge. He's going to stand back at around his 10-yard line as Alex Steffen is going to come in to punt this one away. Avon with a 24 to nothing lead. Play clock down to five seconds. And now Zionsville is going to call a timeout. They didn't have the personnel they wanted on the field. So 18 seconds remain in this first half, Avon already with a 24 to nothing lead on senior night. It's a cold, a very cool, chilly night. The umbrellas have been stowed, so the rain has stopped. What light rain there was, not a whole lot of wind tonight. Not, matter of fact, the, the flags are now hanging limp, so no wind whatsoever. I think I see a few blankets out there tonight. Might see a blanket or two. That that that's that's definitely uh, you know the hot chocolate is flowing at the concession stands tonight. As Alex Steffen back out to punt this ball away, and once again Holden Hodge will plant his heels at about the 10 yard line. 18 seconds remaining in the first half. 24 nothing. Avon with the lead. Zionsville comes with it, and nice kick by Alex Steffen. Hodge will call fair catch, let it bounce. It's going to take an eagle bounce into the end zone, and Zionsville has 9.7 seconds remaining. One timeout, and they trail 24 to nothing. Halftime coming up. We will uh, maybe take a look at some of the seniors on this team. Though I understand that instead of a 20-minute half, we may be down now to a 15-minute half, so we may not have as much time as I thought. But right now, the Eagles are back out onto the field, and they look like they are just going to take a knee. They've already had two turnovers that have led to 14 points for the Orioles. 
And right now they look like they are just simply going to take a knee, head to the locker room, and Trevor Lighty Let's does just eight. that. We're at halftime at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium at Avon High School, and the Orioles with an impressive first half of play. They lead the Zionsville Eagles by the score of 24 to nothing. Back with our halftime show right after these messages. This is Oriole Football on Audio Sports Online. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. McNamara Floors is Indy's hometown floor since 1954, with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Floors is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Floors for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Floors is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition, and now Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of it. Opening last November, Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at redcobrawrestlingacademy.com. Welcome back to Hendricks Regional Health Stadium at Avon High School. Halftime as the ninth ranked in 6A Avon Orioles lead the Zionsville Eagles by the score 24 to nothing. Brian Scott with you. It is senior night here at Avon High School, so I thought we'd take a moment and recognize the seniors that are being honored tonight. And let's start with the cheerleaders, uh, beginning with Ayala Beverly. She uh, plans to attend either Ball State or the University of Kansas, majoring in psychology. Alicia Boyd is planning on going to IUPUI to study elementary education. Alex Cook attend, is planning to attend Ball State and study athletic training and sports medicine. Lauren Jones is planning to go to Indiana State or the University of Cincinnati to study fashion design. Shelby Keys Phillips is hoping to attend either IUPUI or Ball State and major in sociology and a minor in photography. And Lexi Mazur plans to attend IUPUI and major in elementary education and a minor in special education. And finally, the last cheerleader is Brogan Nyland. She plans to attend IU or Ball State and study elementary education and, of course, cheerleading. Athletic, senior athletic trainers tonight, Andy Huckison uh, plans to study athletic training at University of Indianapolis. Gabriel Long plans to study pre-med while attending IU in the, this uh, fall of next year. Kaylee Parrish, she plans to study pre-med at IU. The football managers, Madison Horving, is planning to study pharmacy in college. Taylor Johnson is planning to uh, attend college and study athletic training and sports medicine. And that brings us to our football players. First off, Joe Belden. He's planning 
He is already planning to go to Indiana University where he will be playing football for Coach Kevin Wilson. He is playing a major in business finance. Trevor Bernhardt is currently undecided about his uh, future plans. Rashawn Brent plans to attend college and study pre-physical therapy. Sully Brown, we haven't talked too much about Sully this year, but he plans to attend college and major in mechanical engineering. Jacob Buchanan is planning to work, uh, study constructional management. Brevin Cardwell plans to major in business. Ross Carter uh, is planning to major in psychology when he uh, goes to college. Will Curry, the senior this year, he is undecided on what he plans to do uh, next year. Uh, Gabe Laxton's plans to attend Marion University and study physical therapy. Braden Luce mentioned his name quite often tonight. He plans to attend, uh, uh, play football or in baseball at Hanover College and also attend IU and study biology. Andrew Mallett plans to attend IU or IUPUI to study game designing. Nick Handlin, we talked about him making some good plays tonight. He's planning on studying engineering, and he will be playing baseball uh, at a college yet to be determined. Nick Hibbert would like to become a minister uh, after he graduates Avon High School. Akash Khanna uh, would like to become a cardiologist. Uh, Some of our other seniors, Norman McDuffie plans to study fire science and become a firefighter. Nazo Nalbandian plans to study business uh, after he graduates. Brady Nyland plans to play Football in college and study business. Cole Wrightley is yet undecided about what his plans are after Avon High School, as is Zach Ryan. Drew Shiotovich plans to major in chemical engineering at Purdue, Wisconsin, or Stanford. Alex Steffen plans to attend IUPUI to major in pre-physical therapy. Derek Tennant, he's yet undecided uh, as what his plans will be after Avon High School. Thomas Williams does plan to attend college. Zach Williams back in the starting lineup tonight. He plans to attend college and study biomedical engineering. And Aaron Youngs, he plans to have his undergrad studies at University of Indianapolis and Masters at IU as for a physical assistant. So those are our seniors that are being honored here tonight uh, at his senior night on a, a cool, crisp evening. But so far, if you're an Avon Oriole fan, uh, one that uh, has a lot of the Oriole fans smiling as they lead Zionsville 24 to nothing. Avon will be on the road next week as they will wrap up their regular season to take on the Noblesville Millers. Noblesville playing Brownsburg tonight, and I think the last score we saw, it was Noblesville with a 7-6 to six lead in that game. Fishers was leading Westfield at last uh, last we heard. Uh, the non-conference game tonight is Cathedral uh, taking on Hamilton Southeastern. And the last we saw, Cathedral, uh, they had a two-touchdown advantage over the Hamilton Southeastern Royals. This year has not been one of the better years for head coach Scott May and the Southeastern Royals. As we kind of look at some of the uh, uh, the rank, the excuse me, the standings, coming into tonight's game and I think coach and I we looked at it last week and it'd been a very very long time when you took a look at the bottom of the Hoosier Crossroads Conference standings and you saw Hamilton Southeastern, Brownsburg and Zionsville all in the cellar of the HCC. Coming into play tonight Avon and Fishers were tied for first followed by Westfield and Noblesville. Uh, Westfield actually they will play the final non their final game of the season is a non-conference game against Washington. Uh, Noblesville will play Avon next week, and then Hamilton Southeastern, Brownsburg, and Zionsville. Last week, of course, Avon defeated Westfield. Fishers beat Tech 28-7. Southeastern over Noblesville 16-7. Zionsville defeated Brownsburg 16-3. Tonight, Cathedral, as we said, was leading Southeastern. Noblesville up by one over Brownsburg. Westfield uh, was trailing Fishers. And, of course, Avon up 24-0 against Zionsville. The season will wrap up next week. Avon will be at Noblesville. We'll have that game for you on Audio Sports Online. Brownsburg is at Hamilton Southeastern. Fishers is at Zionsville. And Washington is at Westfield. So uh, the season will come down to the final week of the regular season to decide the Hoosier Crossroads Conference Championship. Right now, both Avon and Fishers right there neck and neck. Uh, They can play next week. If both teams win, they will share uh, uh, the co-conference championship or co-championship, I should say, though I'm sure there's an Avon fan or two that will say that with Avon beating Fishers once, uh, they'll take pride in that, but it would be a co-championship. And then we'll find out this week 
how the sectionals are going to play out. The pairings will be announced on Sunday. And, Coach, uh, I think at the beginning of the year we probably looked and said, well, you had Ben Davis and Pike as the two front runners and maybe Avon as a dark horse. But now as the season's played out, uh, we probably have the, the two top teams in that sectional are the Orioles and, once again, Ben Davis. Well, you know, and Ben Davis has had a couple tough losses lately, so mentally – you know, you, you don't know how her, they're hanging in there. You know, they started the season with real high hopes, and they were preseason ranked number one, and I think preseason ranked in the top 25 nationally. So, you know, men- mentally you're not always sure how teams react, what the chemistry on that team is. You know, they went up, uh, you know, and lost a couple of weeks ago to Warren and then went up, uh, you know, and played Carmel last week and got got handled pretty well so you know yes they're a talented team and they did handle Avon very well early in the year but you know as I mentioned in the first half I think Avon's on the rise right now they're they're playing well getting a little bit better every week and that's where you want to be and uh, I haven't seen Ben Davis but just by you know comparative scores it looks like that you know right right now they're on a little bit of a downswing even though they're they're an extremely talented team and somebody to be reckoned with in the sectional. You know, Pike uh, has, has put up a lot of points and had the big barn burner with Ben Davis here a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, they just lost their quarterback, uh, you know, Bo Trudeau, who was having a, a great year, and they were doing some awfully good things up there offensively. But they were 2-5 and five prior to tonight. So, you know, and they just lost their starting quarterback. So mentally, and, you know, they, they can't be on a high right now, even though they are, they're – Always a very talented and well-coached team. And, you know, Brownsburg appears not to be a very good team, but we know what happened the first time they played Avon. And, you know, Avon-Brownsburg is one of those games, you know, you hate to use the cliches, but, you know, you can kind of throw everything out out, out the table because you just don't know what's going to happen. So, you know, on, on paper, you are correct. It looks like Avon and, Brown, and uh, Ben Davis are the are, are the favorites. But, you know, it's it's tournament time, and, you know, Strange, strange things happen. You, you, you just never know. And when you take a look at some of the 6A sectionals around the state, there's really none tougher than this four, this group of four teams, uh, Ben Davis, Pike, Brownsburg, and Avon. It's, a, it's, it's been one of the, the, the better, uh, me, uh, better sectionals as far as uh, potential talent. Uh, it does seem that Ben Davis and Pike have been the, the two big teams the past few years. I uh, know Avon last year, they went to Ben Davis thinking they had a shot, and they did for about uh, a little bit into the uh, third quarter before Ben Davis finally uh, kind of kicked it into gear and sent Avon uh, packing after uh, what really was a good end to the season last year. And right now we, we're watching again Avon peaking almost, uh, if you want to say peaking at the right time, they're going into sectional play uh, on a high note. And right now, and, and probably if, if you're Coach Bless, you're glad that you've got this whole Hoosier Crossroads Conference championship thing. It's keeping you focused. You're not looking any further down the line because you want to get, uh, uh, you want to be able to focus in on sectional play, uh, but you want this Hoosier Crossroads Conference uh, championship first. It's really what you play the regular season for is to come away a conference championship. And right now, the Orioles with a 24 point lead. Fishers was leading the last we saw. They were up big over Westfield. So everything still is going to come down to a very, very meaningful final game of the regular season. And for Coach Bless, yeah, you, you want to be ready for sectionals, but I got to think uh, they want this conference championship, and that's going to keep the, the Orioles nice and focused as they head into next week against Noblesville. Well, you know, I'd, I'd be lying if I said that, uh, you know, as coaches, you don't do both. You know, you play for the moment. It's like, you know, like like we do in life. You got to take care of the things you got to do today, but you got to plan for the future as well. So, you know, you take care of business. You try to keep the kids focused. You know, winning, winning the conference championship is a big deal, even though it seems like, you know, most people, you know, outside of the team, you know, focus on the tournament and how far you go and that type of thing. But it's, I think, quite an honor to win, win the Hoosier Crossroads championship. It's a demanding and tough conference year in and year out. I think that, uh, you know, we can play with, with anybody. So I, I think it is a nice honor, you know, for the kids and for the coaches, for the school and for the community. So, you know, next next week will be a big week, but, you know, we, we'd be lying if, uh, 
you know, if we thought the kids weren't going to be tuning in on Sunday night to find out who we play and if they're not, uh, you know, looking down the road a little bit. But you hope during the week when they're at practice and when they get out there Friday night at Noblesville that they'll concentrate and do the right thing and come away with that conference championship. Of course, we will have the sectional game for you right here on Audio Sports Online. We'll let you know when and where that's going to be. Uh, if you're following me on Twitter, as I know many of you have started to, it's B. Scott Spot. I'll try to tweet that out as soon as I find out uh, where the Orioles will be uh, come their sectional opener. That's B-S-C-O-T-T-S-S-P-O-T. We'll try to tweet that out as soon as we know. Uh, hopefully I will get back. I actually plan on being in Cincinnati to catch the Panthers and the Bengals uh, uh, Sunday, but I hope to be back in time to uh, catch the sectional opener, uh, sectional draw, so we find out who the Orioles will play in their uh, sectional opener come uh, the draw that will be announced on Sunday. Both teams are making their way back out onto the field, so we're going to take a timeout, pay some bills, come back, second half action on the way. Orioles leading the Eagles 24 nothing. This is Oriole Football on Audio Sports Online. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. McNamara Florist is Indy's hometown floor since 1954, with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Florist is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Florist for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Florist is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Avon has a rich wrestling tradition, and now Red Cobra Wrestling is proud to be a part of it. Opening last November, Red Cobra Wrestling offers training sessions run by nationally known coach Chad Red. Red Cobra Wrestling is located at 9233 East Highway 36 in Avon, across the street from Walmart and behind sidelines in the Red Brick Building. Red Cobra Wrestling offers sessions for all ages, including third grade and under and fourth grade and up. Learn more about prices, class schedules, and information at RedCobraWrestlingAcademy.com. Getting ready for second half action here at Avon as the Orioles rank ninth in Class 6A. They lead the Zionsville Eagles 24 to nothing. Alongside the Indiana Football Hall of Famer Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. Orioles will have the ball to begin second half play. Already up 24 to nothing. They've taken advantage of a couple of Zionsville turnovers, a questionable call by a uh, uh, coaching decision by co head coach, uh, Eagle head coach Pat Echeverria going for it fourth and two deep in his own territory. Eagles didn't get it. That led to an Avon field goal. And right now the Orioles up 24 to nothing. On senior night, a chilly night, but right now the Avon faithful very, very happy as they get ready to 
kick this ball away do the Eagles to begin the second half. Trevor Lichty came in in relief of Drew Bertram. Lichty first pass was intercepted by Braden Luce. That eventually led to a, an Oriole touchdown. But right now it'll be the Oriole offense that'll begin the second half as Max War will kick a high kick that's just going to go out of bounds and Things go a little bit from bad to worse for the Eagles as on the opening kickoff, they kick it out of bounds. And the Orioles, who have not had a single possession in a bad field position yet tonight, uh, they'll start the second half in excellent field position. Every, everything's gone right for Avon tonight. A big part of that, though, is because they've, they've made it happen. Offensively, they've done what they need to do. Defensively, they've played hard. The kicking game has been very solid. So the Royals will begin this drive first and 10 from their own 35-yard line with a three-wide set as Brandon Peters will drop back to pass. He'll fire near side complete. That's Braden Luce, and Luce will take it into Eagle territory, and it'll be first and 10 as coming in to make the tackle was Michael Luce and Taylor Allen for the Eagles, but a pickup of about uh, 25, 27 yards to the Eagle 48-yard line. Yeah, big big block downfield by Matt Moore. He's getting, you know, some high fives down there from his teammates. Uh, he was a receiver on the play, doubled back, made a big block to help his teammate. It's first and 10, Avon opening drive of the second half. The Orioles already up 24-0. Here's Derek Tennant. He runs right up the middle, and Derek's going to have a nine-yard run inside the 40 down to the 39-yard line. It'll be second and one for Avon as Derek just took it right up the middle. Yeah, nice, nice little trap lock in there. I'm not sure. It might have been Ross Carter on a tackle pull. But they, they, they run a little trap play inside again to complement that inside zone, hit it clean. Uh, you know, Derek, Derek hits the, the line of scrimmage like a ton of bricks, and when there's that opening, he's going to pick up big yards. So second and one for the Orioles. Braden Luce will go to the far side. That's Andrew Griffin near side. The give is to, I believe, Darian Love. And it's actually Derek Tennant. Needed a yard, picked up two. It'll be first and ten for the Orioles. So just methodically already they get the nice pass to Braden Loose. A couple of Derek Tennant runs, and the Orioles already have it first and ten at the Eagle 37-yard line of the opening drive of the second half. Three wide outs with two located to the near side. Derek Tennant, the lone back with Brandon Peters. Eagles show blitz. Now they back out of it all day. Now T Peters is going to be sacked as the pocket collapse, and he's sacked from behind. Tackle made by Blake Coker, the 6'2", 200-pound senior middle linebacker of the Eagles. Good, good coverage. That, that was a coverage sack. You know, he, he looked for a receiver. There wasn't one there. Uh, the pocket collapsed around him late. The protection really was pretty solid by the offensive line. And, you know, very wisely, you know, you'll, you'll take that sack. That's a lot better than putting the ball up. And, uh, you know, there just wasn't any room to get out of the pocket that time. They will bring tight end right, but they will give to Derek Tennant. He's through to the 20, 10. Nobody's going to catch him. And Derek Tennant is going to run it in from 42 yards out. Well, that's, that's another trap again. I mean, they're, they're running a little trap play inside very well. It's, uh, you know, the inside the tackle running attack from uh, Avon the last couple of weeks has been very good, and that's that's because the offensive line is, is doing what they're supposed to do. They brought Darian Love and Derek Tennant as split backs as Brandon Peters went under center. The give was to Tennant, and he just exploded through the second line of defense as the point after by Alex Steffen wasn't pretty, but it goes through. And with 9.45 remaining in this first third quarter, Avon extends their lead 31-0. Back with a kickoff in a moment. This is Oriole Football and ASO. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. 
McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Main and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the jalapeno burger or the triple cheeseburger today. Derek Tennant's 42-yard run extends the lead to, for Avon to 31-0 as Alex Steffen's kick will trickle into the end zone for the touchback. Orioles take the opening drive of the second half. They go 65 yards. They only need about five plays to do it. And, again, Derek Tennant with a big 42-yard run. They do it in just a little over um, a little more than two minutes, 15 seconds, and it's a 31 to nothing Avon lead. So the Eagles will start this drive from their own 20-yard line, trailing big. And it'll be Trevor Lichty back out to run the offense for the Eagles. No, that's actually Bertram. There's a give around the right side. And it will be down the far sideline. Late flag is coming in. Looked like it was... Chandler Orball with the carry. He was tiptoeing down the sideline, and Oriole finally hit him out of bounds. Actually, they're going to mark him back at the 41, so that's why the late the flag came out. They say Orball was already out at the 41, and then the Orioles hit him at about the 50. So he did look like he was tiptoeing down that sideline, but it'll be a late hit by the Avon, and the 15-yard penalty will move the football into Avon territory. Well, Zionsville is showing a little life, and, you know, you hope for their sake that they can, you know, put put something together here. They're going to get the same draw on Sunday night that Avon is, and they are a 5A school, and, you know, they won't be playing the 6A schools here in the tournament, so maybe they'll get a little bit better draw. So Drew Bertram is back out onto the field to begin the third quarter. Here's a give to Matt Panola that looks for some room around the right side. Cuts it up. Nice run by Panola. He's going to be stacked up by Brian Fitzgerald and then a host of other Oriole defenders, but not before Panola takes it down to the Avon 32-yard line. A pickup of about 11 yards, and it should be an eagle first down. So they'll move the chains on a nice run by the senior 6'1", 220-pound Matt Panola. And the Eagles now with... They started the first half off with their best drive so far of the game. They're starting the second half, their first drive of the second half, much the same way. That's Orbaugh in motion. Play action to Panola. Bertram with some pressure will fire it downfield. Pass is incomplete. He was looking for Panola. And looks like that in coverage for was Thomas Williams. And bring up yeah, second. A little, little play action pass. That, you know, it's a little tough to run when you're down 31 to nothing. I think uh, they might ignore that run and play the pass and try try not to give up the big play. Nine minutes, nine seconds remaining in this third quarter. All Avon tonight, 31 to nothing. Zionsville with the football. Three wideouts to the near side, but they'll send a man in motion. That's Eddie Mattingly. The give is to Panola on the counter, and Panola will... Plow forward inside the 30 to close to the 29-yard line. That's going to bring up third down at about seven. Once again, Matt Thompson in there on the tackle, a six-foot, 205-pound junior linebacker for the Orioles as the ball rests on the 29-yard line. Third down, about seven for the Eagles as they take a long look over to the sideline to get the play. And they will once again line up with three wide receivers to the near side. Panola to the left. Now they will bring once again Mattingly in motion. He'll reverse. Back to passes. Bertram. Here comes the pressure, and he goes down. Belden. Joe Belden came in and wasn't far behind was Brian Fitzgerald. As that time, Joe Belden and Brian Fitzgerald just awesome. went through the Zionsville Four offensive down. line like tissue paper, and they sack Bertram all the way back to the 37-yard line where it'll bring up fourth down and about 15. And really, when you're down by 31, not a whole lot of options. So Coach, 
uh, Echeverria has shown that uh, he doesn't do much in the way of the kicking game. He has gone for it more often than not. I think they've had one punt and the one uh, field goal attempt that was woefully short. On fourth and 15, back to pass, firing down the field, and the pass is complete. A nice catch to, by Mattingly. Eddie Mattingly went up, brought that ball down. It was well defended. I think Braden Luce was in coverage. But Mattingly simply went up, took the ball at the high point, brought it down, and it's a big, big fourth down conversion for Zionsville to the Oriole 14-yard line. Well, this, this is when it's fun to be a defensive lineman for Avon because at that 31-point lead, they're teeing off and coming. Mattingly once again in motion, but the give is to Panola. He'll break through the first line of defense and finally be drugged down inside the five, down to the four. And they will stop play as Avon will call a timeout. 7.07 left to go, third quarter. Avon uses the first of their three. Back in a moment, this is Oriole Football and ASO. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. Avon calls a timeout on defense as the Eagles have marched down the field. And they have it second and short. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. As once again, Bertram will drop back to pass. Fires left side pass incomplete. Looking for Grant Sloan, but that pass way high. And it'll bring up third down and short. Third down. Instead of electing to maybe use Matt Panola um, and all in the run, they have tried to get it passing, and it's incomplete. And that will bring up third down. So once again, they will have split backs at Sloan in motion. This time they will hand it off to Panola, and he is stacked up and brought down. A whole host of Orioles, but the first one there was Joe Belden, and they knock Panola back about three yards back to the seven, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, the Eagles were able to convert on fourth down just a moment ago when Bertram found Mattingly. Now they have it fourth down. They can get a first down without getting the touchdown. And here is the option they'll pit. This is Hodges. Spins away from one, still moving, and they will not get it. Joe Belden, I believe, was able to grab a hold of Hodges first. Or, excuse me, John Ramsey. That was Ramsey, the ball carrier, and... That allowed the rest of the Oriole defense to stack him up before he could get to the yard-to-gain marker, and the Eagles will turn it over on downs. Yeah, Avon closed really, really well. They were in uh, man coverage, so somebody was assigned to the to the, the pitch man. Uh, when he first pitched it, it looked like it might be open, but a couple of defenders from Avon closed on it in a hurry and kept him from getting the first down. So the Orioles take over first and ten from their own five-yard line leading 31 to nothing as Peters and the offense are out there. They give the ball off and coming to the near side, I believe that's Darian Love, and Love will take it up to about the 12-yard line and pick up about six, seven yards on the play to bring up second down and three. You know, Avon wants to stay consistent here, keep moving the football. You know, I, I doubt that they'll quit passing the ball, but they'll probably rely a little more on the running game. You, you know, you just want to continue to be 
good fundamentally, do the things that uh, you do well, and, uh, you know, hopefully come out of here injury-free. That's a big thing right now. Avon sends three wide receivers to the top of the formation, but this is a handoff to Love. Love didn't find a whole lot of room before he was uh, brought down. As uh, coming in to make the tackle for the Eagles was Jake Minuski. The safety no, came in to stop. Play. Darian Love, it'll bring a third down in about two, three yards. Yeah, we were talking earlier trying to figure out if he's uh, related to the Colts defensive coordinator. That is a good question. Very good question, but he's he's out there uh, playing safety and uh, made a nice play to get Darian Love for no game, but third down in about three as Love remains in the game. Three wide outs. Peters back to pass. Fires pass incomplete. Looking over to the far side, I believe he was looking to Andrew Griffin. Or excuse me, Aaron Youngs, who was in as a wide hour. It's going to be a little difficult as his coach Mark Bless might start shuttling in some of the uh, second teamers with these uh, camo numbers. It's very difficult to read some of those numbers, but that's Aaron Youngs, who was in as a wide out. Pass is incomplete, and Alex Steffen is on to punt this ball away as Holden Hodge will stand back, I believe, at around his 45-yard line. Stefan at the goal line gets a high, high kick. This one's going to take a bounce, and it'll take a, an Oriole bounce and an even better bounce as it's going to go down to about the 42-yard line, and they will down it actually at the 43. So the Eagles will have the ball after forcing a three and out by Avon. First and 10 from their own 43-yard line. Eagles trail by the score of 31 to nothing. Alongside Dave Shelbourne, I'm Brian Scott. Glad you could join us for Oriole football on Audio Sports Online. Final regular season home game for Avon. They will close out the regular season next week at Noblesville. And, of course, as I mentioned, we will find out the sectional draw coming up on Sunday. So first and 10 from the 43-yard line as Bertram, I believe, is back out onto the field. They will send player in motion, but once again, flags fly. And this has been a problem with the Eagles, I think, all night long. They have been called for more illegal procedure penalties, shifting motion penalties, you name it. And uh, what we have heard about the Zionsville offense this has been a big problem of theirs all season long they have lacked consistency and they have also uh, uh, been killed by these little nagging penalties uh, illegal motion illegal procedure penalties and this uh, this drive starts with a five yard procedure penalty Eagles will line up with three wide receivers to the near side on this first and 15 as Bertram is back to pass fires over the middle pass is complete Comes to the near side, and finally making the catch was Drew Shyotovich, Jared Overmeyer with the catch. And Overmeyer will take it into Oriole territory to the 48. About a nine-yard catch and pitch and catch, and it'll be second and one. Yeah, not, not that Avon's changed your defensive philosophy, but obviously when you're up by 31, you don't have to apply as much pressure. You don't have to play quite as... Uh, tight and the first down or two isn't going to kill you. A four down front for the Orioles as they'll bring as the Eagles bring a man in motion that's Jay Edwards but the handoff is to Panola makes one man miss and a good strong run by Panola Matt Panola will here. take it down to inside the 42 yard line it's a pickup of about six and it'll be first and ten for Zionsville. Ball is marked the Avon 42 yard line first down. Three minutes, 40 seconds remain in the third quarter. All Avon as the Orioles are up 31 to nothing. Eagles with three wide receivers to the far side. Yeah, but they will hand off to Panola, who will go straight ahead, and he will pick up three or four yards before Rashawn Brent and a few other Orioles haul him down after a gain of four. Well, let's call it four yards down to the Oriole 38 yard line. It'll bring up second and six. Up. 
Again, first-year coach Pat Echeverria taking over for a long-time Eagles coach Larry McWhorter. Year of transition for this Zionsville team, but as Coach Shelbourne mentioned, always Zionsville always has good talent. It might just take them a year or so to, to start gelling under the system of Coach Echeverria. Here's a pass out to the far side. Bertram's they were looking for, for Chandler Orball, but Bertram's pass a little out of Orball's reach, and that'll bring up third and six. Yeah, got a Zionsville player down on the field here right now, so the officials will be taking a quick timeout. It looks like the center, Drew Hobick, who is down, and while the training staff comes out to take a look at the young man, we'll take a timeout as well. Two minutes, 40 seconds left to go third quarter. Avon up 31-0. You're watching Oriole Football on Audio Sports Online. Stop in any Browns Burger Avon McDonald's and try one of their two $2 Tasty Specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheese Burger. McDonald's is a proud supporter of Avon and Brownsburg Athletics and is proud to host the McDonald's Hendricks County Sports Show, taped Wednesday nights on location and aired Friday nights before football on 1610 AM XRB and XRBRadio.com. McDonald's has two locations in Brownsburg and Avon. In Brownsburg, they are located at the corner of Maino and Odell next to Marsh and just off Green Street next to I-74. In Avon, you can find them at the corner of 267 and 36 next to Kroger or on Rockville Road next to Meyer. Stop in either Brownsburg or Avon McDonald's for their $2 tasty specials, the Jalapeno Burger or the Triple Cheeseburger today. Drew Hobick made it over to the sideline under his own power, a little wobbly, but over on the sideline, nonetheless, it will be third down and six. Clock moves, 2.20 remains in this third quarter. Avon up 31-0. They'll bring a uh, man in motion and giving the ball to uh, John Ramsey. Ramsey Ramsey's will find a few there. yards and not much more than that. It's going to bring fourth down for the Eagles as they'll spot the ball uh, just outside the 35-yard line. So it'll be fourth down, uh, call it four yards to go for the Eagles. Under two minutes left to go, third quarter. Zionsville has had it down this end of the field just a few minutes ago, but they were turned away on a fourth and goal, or fourth and short. Here is a ball tipped and intercepted. Didn't see who tipped it, but coming away with it is Drew Shiatovich. Ball was tipped as they were trying to get the ball over the middle of the field. And somebody there, one of the linebackers, I believe, tipped the ball in the air, and Shiatovich came away with the interception. Well, you know, Avon's just doing it all right tonight. You know, the defensive lineman got his hand up. Uh, deflection, good reaction in the secondary by Drew Shiatovich, and uh, you know, Avon's got the ball again and probably will continue to move the football pretty well offensively. We're going to start seeing, I believe, more Orioles in as they throw out to the far side. They try to set up the screen. And pass, complete to number eight, Matt, Moore. Matt Moore making his Brought first catch of 77. the night. We haven't really talked a whole lot about Matt. He's made some nice blocks. But he makes he has his first uh, reception of the night as he Can't takes it up to about the 38-yard line. It's a pickup of eight, second and two. Matt Matt is just a, a real well-balanced tight end. He's a great receiver and gets some accolades for that. But he's a real strong blocker, outstanding baseball pitcher already committed to uh, to Purdue and just you know just a really really good kid. Aaron Youngs is back in as a wide out, but this is Darian Love. Finds some room around the left side, and Darian's going to pick up about seven yards up to the 45-yard line, and it'll be an Oriole first down. That all, Avon offensive line just continues to come off the ball and dominate. You know, they've had, had some fun tonight. They're, uh, you know, kicking their heels up there pretty good, coming off the ball very, very well, and I I've, I've just like the way they've progressed all year. Coach uh, Jared Johnson. Uh, coaches them up, and, you know, as a unit, I think they've just gotten better and better each week. It's first and 10, Avon clock moves. We're under 33 seconds left to go in the third quarter. As the Orioles, there's a handoff, and this is Love who spins. Love and, the ball carrier, close to and he will take it close, but a penalty flag right there at the line of scrimmage. 
So we'll check out the penalty flag. Love took it up to about the 50-yard line, but this flag is right at the line of scrimmage, and we have tripping. Don't see that call too often anymore, but tripping is the call, I believe, against the Orioles, and that's a 15-yard penalty. Well, the officiating crew seems to be coming up with all of them here tonight. We've seen a little bit of that, a little bit of this. A lot of flags flying. You know, it's a little bit of a sloppy game. And, you know, one team with the big advantage, so that happens sometimes in games like this. But there there have been a number, uh, seemingly uh, more, more penalties called here tonight. Orioles will let this clock wind down, and we will switch ends and head to the fourth quarter. It's been all Avon all night long. And as we head to the fourth, Avon leads Zionsville 31 to nothing. We'll be back right after this. This is Avon Oriole Football on Audio Sports Online. Reynolds Body Shop is a proud sponsor of Avon Football Broadcast. They are conveniently located at 4325 West Washington Street in Indianapolis, just four stoplights east of 465. Their phone is 317-243-2372, and they are open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Reynolds has been family-owned and operated for 30 years, specializing in collision repair. Reynolds Body Shop is also an insurance work specialist. Learn more about them on the web at www.reynoldsbodyshop.com. Fourth quarter action about to get underway. It's been all Avon all night long. They have taken advantage of numerous Zionsville turnovers, turned them into points. As it's been Brandon Peters, Derek Tennant, some good defense. And a very, very satisfying night so far here on senior night at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium. Alongside Dave Shelborn, I'm Brian Scott. Fourth quarter will begin with first and 20 ball at the 35 after the tripping penalty called against Avon. Peters will drop back to pass. Line holds up down the middle, wide open, and just overthrowing Andrew Griffin, I believe. As Andrew, much like Matt Moore, I think he has been shut out tonight. I can't remember him catching a ball yet, but it's been pretty much Derek Tennant and Braden Luce. We've seen Cole Wrightley with a couple of catches. Matt Moore just picked up his first reception a few minutes ago, and right there, Griffin had a step on the defender, but Andrew... Uh, or Brandon, excuse me, a little bit long on the pass. It'll bring up second and 20. Here is a handoff and running right up the middle, I believe, is Darian Love. He's going to pick up about nine yards up to about the 43-yard line, let's call it. It'll be third down and about 12. Yeah, a little, little tackle trap action that time. They've been pulling some linemen, opening up some big holes tonight, and Move the ball on the ground extremely well. It's third down and 12. Orioles need to get it to the Eagle 45-yard line for a first down. Clock moving in the fourth quarter. 11-20 left to go in the football game. Avon with a 31-0 lead. Two wideouts to the near side as Peters looks over that three-man front. Back to pass is Brandon. Fires right side. Pass is complete. Sure. It'll be a... Cole Wrightley with another catch. It's going to be a couple of yards shy, and this time Coach Bless is going to send the punting unit out on fourth, and uh, they'll set, mark the ball at about the 40. Uh, call just beyond the 47-yard line. It'll be fourth down and a long two, and Alex Steffen will be on to punt this football away. Back deep, Olden Hodge. Alex Steffen's punts as the season has progressed have gotten consistently better. He's getting very, very good hang time and his distance has been getting better as the season goes. And he gets another high kick that's gonna force Hodge to call the fair catch. It'll take an (laughs) Oriole bounce and it'll be finally down at about the nine yard line. So again, another good punt by Alex Steffen. And as I mentioned, as the seasons progress, Alex's punts have gotten uh, higher. Uh, They've gotten more net out of Alex, and uh, it's become a better weapon for the Orioles. 
uh, as the season has progressed. So right now it's the Eagles back out on offense. They trail 31 to nothing with 10-13 remaining in the football game. As Bertram is back out, I believe, at quarterback. And three wideouts will head to the far side of the formation as this first play from the nine-yard line. Bertram passes. He has a man complete at the 20 and taking it to about the 23-yard line. The pass is complete to Ben Hudson. And it'll be Nick Handlin with the tackle. So the first play of this drive is a completion for a first down. Ball, spot the ball at the Eagle 23-yard line, first and 10, Zionsville. Again, three wideouts. This time they're all lined up here to the near side. Now they will send Overmeyer in motion, or excuse me, uh, uh, Orbaugh in motion, but the handoff is, I believe, Brendan Michelsall maybe. It was. It was Brendan Michelsall with the carry. And he gets very little of that on that. Maybe a half yard. It'll be second down. And so let's call it 10 yards. As uh, looks like Coach Patch Echeverria now starting to put a few more of his second teamers in. Here's Mikasol once again. He breaks loose. And Mikasol will take it all the way up to about the 41 yard line before he is brought down. Gabe Laxton's with the tackle for Avon, but a nice game first by Mikasol, and it'll be first and 10 Zionsville this time with the ball spotted at their own 41 yard line. Clock moves, 9.07 remaining in this football game. It's been all Avon. It's just a matter of winding this clock down and preparing for what will be a huge game next week. We see Aaron Youngs here on the sideline. He is loosening up, so Brandon Peters' day is likely done. Here is a give, and once again, it is, I believe, Matt Panola this time with the carry, and Panola will gain about a yard, and it'll bring up second down at about nine. So Brandon Peters' day looks like it is done. Aaron Youngs is loosening up here on the sideline as Coach Mark Bless is gonna make sure that he gets all of his seniors into this game tonight and get some playing time for some of his other players as here's Panola once again. He's gonna be stacked up at the line of scrimmage and go Panola nowhere and it'll bring up third down and long. Well, that's, you know, that's one of the things you do like as a coach about a game like this. You get kids that just come every day, work hard, uh, give you everything they have, give up all their time in the summer you know, give, give up their Saturdays, family sacrifice. And, you know, I, I think everybody understands that Friday night is a pretty serious time and you're going to come out here and play your best kids and try to win, but it's awfully rewarding to get these other kids out there in a game, especially on senior night. Orioles show blitz, long pass, incomplete. Looked like he was looking for Jay Edwards, but the pressure was on and Bertram just had to release that football. It actually, it was... Uh, not Jay Edwards, it was Chandler Orbaugh, the intended receiver, but the pressure came from the Orioles. Bertram had to get rid of the football, and that'll bring up fourth down, and this time, Coach Echeverry is going to send out Max Ward to punt this ball away. Braden Luce and Andrew Griffin will drop back as twin safeties for Avon, and the ball gets through the fingertips, and it's going to be down. It was actually Jake Minuski, excuse me, was the punter, the snap was high, went through his fingers, and had to be Nick Hanlon. He's usually the guy that's... I believe Griffin Blanc actually came away oh, with it. Oh, good, good for him. Griffin Blanc came away with it. It was a high snap. Jake Minuski couldn't bring it down. Slipped through his hands, and there was Griffin Blanc to bring it down. And the Orioles have another turnover and have the ball first and 10 at the Eagle 22-yard line. 7.35 remains in this football game. 31-0 Avon, and Aaron Youngs is on to quarterback the Oriole offense. We will try our best to tell you who is uh, actually out there with him, but it is very hard to see these numbers. But it will be a handoff that comes to the near side. Darian Love 
with the football. He'll get no gain on the play as the Eagles manage to snuff that one out. Brandon Wilson with a tackle for Zionsville. It'll be second and ten. Well, it's 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 gone our way. We've we've played well. It's nice to see these kids get in. Uh, you know, got the starters out, most of them out here. So you know, we came out of this. It looks like physically in pretty good shape. Mentally, Avon's got to be you know feeling very very good about this game. Uh, you know, and get getting ready for next week and uh, you know wrapping up that conference championship. Sully Brown is into the lineup. He's the wide receiver to the far side of the field. Another one of the seniors. Haven't seen a whole lot of Sully this year, but he's in as the wide receiver. But they give us to Darian Love. Darian spins, takes it down to about the 17-yard line, a pickup of about five, six yards. It'll bring up third down in about four. Clock moves. We're under seven minutes left to play here at Hendricks Regional Health Stadium. Yvonne leading Zinesville 31 to nothing. Brown will go to the far side and as Youngs has split backs working out of the gun. Aaron fires, looking for Sully Brown, passes incomplete. Looking for Sully, it was defended by Billy Goggins by the Eagles and that'll bring up fourth down as Coach Bless, of course, will leave the offense out on the field for this fourth and four. Yeah, nice, nice throw by uh, by Youngs. Hasn't had a chance to play a whole lot this year. And, um, you know, got an opportunity to throw the ball, and I'm sure they're trying to reward him a little bit for his good hard work in the, in the program and really delivered that ball very well. Of course, Aaron, a senior, bends under center, as they work out of the eye, a little confusion, but here's Darian Love. He finds room around the left side, and after a little confusion, Darian's going to have the first down as he gets inside the 10 down to the Eagle 9-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Orioles. Might have to put that play in. It, you know, ended up somebody did go the wrong way, ended up being like a little delay play, and the offensive line did such a nice job blocking, he ended up with a first down. Sully Brown will once again go to the far side as I believe over here on the near side is Akash Khanna. He's getting his first look here as the eye backfield. The give is to Darian Love. Love around the right side and he will take it inside the three down to the two and they'll spot him finally down at the one yard line. It'll be second and goal for Avon. Coach Bless getting all of his seniors in. Akash Khanna getting in. Sully Brown was in. Of course, Aaron Young in at quarterback. And now we have a timeout. As whistle stop play. Which, the way this night's going, there's really no telling, but they will... They will mark the ball ready for play and wind the clock once again. So 5.30 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Love is the tailback as Aaron Young bends under center. And that, that time everybody moved except, I think, uh, the center. And the five-yard penalty will back the Orioles up to the six-yard line. So a lot of players getting their first chance really to play. And... They'll mark it, actually, that, so that ball was at the two-yard line. They mark it five yards back to the seven. It'll be second and goal from the seven. Yeah, I think other than some of the players getting in there to get a little playing time, the key thing you uh, just mentioned is keep the clock running. So it will, the clock will be under five minutes, likely, when they snap this football as Kana comes to the near side, Brown to the far side. Darian Love in there. As it split backs and another penalty flag. Noblesville beating Brownsburg right now, 21 to 14. Another penalty, this one against Avon as well. And Avon shooting themselves backwards. Another five yards. Now they'll set up shop. Second and goal from the 12-yard line. But the clock will move. And as Coach mentions, another 20 seconds or 25 seconds will run off the clock. 
The give is to Love. He'll find some room around the left side and he'll plow down the inside the area. five, down to the four yard line before he is tackled. Brought down, I believe, on the play by Ben Nett, the corner. But it's a nice game by Darian Love inside the five to about the four yard line. It'll be third and goal from the four. Clock under third four down. minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this football game. Avon still with a 31 to nothing lead. Connor to the near side, Brown, uh, Brown to the far side. Young with the eye backfield. Darian loves the tailback. The give is to Darian, looks for some room around the left side and he's in from four yards out for the touchdown. Darian Love. Finds pay dirt from four yards out as the Orioles overcome a couple of penalties that had them back to their own 12-yard line in a goal-to-go situation. And Love, two plays later, finds the end zone from four yards out. And it's a 37 to nothing Avon lead with the point after from Sam Perino on the way. Drew Shayadovich puts it down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Three minutes, 56 seconds left to go, and the Avon Orioles lead 38 to nothing. Back with a kickoff in a moment. This is Oriole Football and Audio Sports Online. McNamara Florist is Indy's hometown floor since 1954, with eight convenient locations, including the new Avon store on Rockville Road. McNamara Florist is famous for our floral designs for all occasions that help our clients express their emotions through flowers. Visit McNamara Florist for outstanding personal service and to select from the renowned home decor merchandising, including stunning Christmas classics. McNamara Florist is located at 9655 East Highway 36 in Avon, and you can give them a call at 579-7900. Well, once again, the Avon Orioles take a turnover and turn it into seven. This time it was the mishandled punt by Zionsville's Jake Minuski. The Orioles fall on it. Griffin Blunk recovered it, and the Orioles convert it to a touchdown. As I believe Stefan kicks this one, it's going to be mishandled by Ramsey, and Ramsey is not going to get much further as he's going to be brought down after a short run. And it's once again going to be deep in Eagle territory as they'll spot the ball at the Zionsville 15-yard line. Three minutes and 50 seconds remain. Zion, er, Avon with a 38 to nothing advantage. So as we've said the past few weeks, one of the strengths so far that we've really seen from Avon the past few weeks has been Consistency on offense, consistency on defense, and being very opportunistic and taking what the, uh, if the other team's going to turn it over, Zionville uh, has done that, I think, four times tonight. Avon's proven they can turn it into points, and they've done that the past three or four weeks. So uh, Avon being very opportunistic on offense, taking what they'll uh, get in way of turnovers as they run by Ramsey over the left side as he's going to be falling. That's going to be the flags flying as coming in. And uh, I don't know if that was Rashawn Brent that gave a little extra shove there, but flags came from three different directions as Ramsey was uh, out of bounds and got the little extra shove. And the 15 yards will go against the Avon Orioles. So Avon will head to Noblesville next week. The last uh, we heard was Fishers was leading Westfield. Again, all Avon needs to do is take care of their own business. A win next week at Noblesville guarantees them no worse than a share of the conference championship. Fishers will be playing these very same Zionsville Eagles next week. That game is at Zionsville. So all Avon needs to do is take care of their own business and they can put an HCC championship in their back pocket after next week. First and 10 and shooting through and making a great tackle, Bryant Fitzgerald. Not a whole lot of sophomores that, uh, you know, have been playing for Avon this year. Uh, Fitzgerald's been one of them. He's had an outstanding season. Gunnar Larson as a, as a nose man has, has done the same, but it's a, 
you know, veter veteran squad, juniors and seniors. So, you know, for a sophomore to get out there on the field and make the kind of plays that Fitzgerald just made is, a, you know, is a compliment to him. And it'll be second down and 15 from the 36, back to pass and not going to pass. I believe Trevor Lichty is going to be brought down by A.J. Elcott. As nowhere to go for the young Zionsville quarterback, and Elcock sacks him back at the 30-yard line. And after moving out to the 41-yard line on consecutive plays, the Avon defense has pushed Zionsville back to the 30. Well, this is good for everybody. It looks like, you know, nearly all the second-string kids in there, and they're still playing well, and they're still bringing it hard, and they're getting in there getting some blitzes and sacks, so they'll be good for their confidence if they should ever have to play. Lichty is not going to be able to get rid of this football, and now it's, as Coach Mendez, Rashawn Brent with the sack as the Avon defensive line has just got their ears pinned back. And the Eagles find themselves where the drive started all the way back to the 15-yard line. They managed to take it out to their own 41, and then three successive plays, the Avon defense has put them back all the way where they started the drive, and now Minuski is on the punt. Well, you know, I don't know what the expectation for Zionsville was tonight, you know, as far as realism or realistically expecting to come in here and win, but I'm sure that uh, they expected to come in here and at least be a little bit more competitive and make more of a game out of this. But this has been, uh, you know, an Avon-dominated game from start to finish. This ball will be down at the Oriole 40 yard line with a minute 23 left to go in this football game. We'll see if Coach Echeverria elects to use any of his three timeouts or if he's just gonna let Avon sit on this football and take a, a very, very big senior night win, head to the locker rooms, prepare for what will turn into a, a game next week for the Hoosier Crossroads Conference Championship at Noblesville. And a big, big win for Avon. Ever since that loss to Brownsburg three weeks ago, it has been nothing but a very, very intense and focused Avon Oriole football team. They came out, and Coach Bless fully admitted that after that Brownsburg game, they were not, they were flat. They were not that intense. They have been a model of, of intensity since that game as the give is to the near side as... Running with the See football ya. for Avon was uh, Corey DePriest. A sophomore gets the carry as we had under a minute left to play in this football game. So it's been all Avon tonight. And again, it's been that consistency and intensity for the Orioles as now they'll just go into a victory formation and elect to kneel this down. So coach, a big, big win. It'll be a huge game next week. We've liked the intensity the Orioles have shown the last three weeks since that loss to Brownsburg. And I can't imagine going to Noblesville knowing that you are playing for no worse than a share of the conference title, uh, that it's going to be uh, any less intense uh, going to Noblesville next week. Well, you know, if the Avon coaches could have written up a dream game plan, they sure got it tonight. I, I, I know they came in here confident and expected to – to win, but you know I don't think they plan to dominate like they did, and they really they've they've just played well. I'm trying to think back here. I don't know that we've had a uh, had a turnover. Uh, you know, offensively, kicking game's been solid. Uh, you know, they got a shutout after they had the first drive. I think I overheard one of the other guys say the first half they had four first downs. Zionsville did, and two of them were on penalties. So, you know, from start to finish, Avon did what they needed to do, what the coaches had, uh, you know, hoped and planned for them to do. And, again, eighth game into the season, they're playing their best football with the tournament draw and a conference championship coming up next week. This is exactly where you want to be as a coaching staff and as a team. The Orioles have one more game to play in this regular season. They'll find out who they're going to open sectional play on Sunday night. Uh, if you like Follow me on Twitter, B. Scott Spot. I'll try as soon as I find out. Make sure I get that posted. Of course, you can also go to IHSAA.org and find that out. But it'll be a big game next week 
As uh, Coach said, you always want to look, maybe you, you like to look ahead to sectionals, but with a conference championship on the line, the Orioles will be ready for it next week at Noblesville. So will we. We'll have the game for you next week right here on Audio Sports Online. Pre-game is at 645, and the kickoff between Noblesville and Avon is set for 7 o'clock. For the Indiana Football Hall of Famer Dave Shelburne, I'm Brian Scott saying thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll see you next week at Noblesville. Once again, the final score. The Avon Orioles defeat Zionsville 38 to nothing. And you have been watching Oriole Football on Audio Sports Online. Thanks for tuning in to Avon Varsity Football on Audio Sports Online. Tonight's game has been brought to you by McDonald's, Reynolds Body Shop, McNamara Florist, and Red Cobra Wrestling. Get a free on-demand replay of tonight's game by visiting audiosportsonline.com. Oreo football is an audiosportsonline.com production.